the FIA Judicia Hockey Men's World Cup 2023 final. Defeat the Netherlands once again in a World Cup shootout here in the Kalinga Stadium. Well, Belgium have looked very efficient. They will be playing Germany in the final. The defending champions, Belgium. Germany have got the quality. Certainly looking forward to this. No doubt, about to play out. It's now or never, isn't it? It is match day 15 of the FIH Adisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023. 43 matches played, one to go. The men's final between Germany and Belgium is up next. So plenty to talk about ahead of that match, some pre-match analysis and also looking back at that bronze medal game. If you're just joining us, the Netherlands have beaten Australia by three goals to one to pinch the bronze. Alongside me watching all of the action with Cedric D'Souza and fresh from the commentary box is Rick Charlesworth. Uh, Rick, from the comms box, um, how did that pan out for you and uh, did, did we get the right winner in the end? Well, I think Australia started the better. They certainly had the better of the first half. Um, and uh, in the second half, well, uh, once uh, the Dutch got a corner and then another a bad piece of defending, if you like, gave them the break, then they scored a very good goal. So uh, in the end, Australia had to chase the game. The Dutch were a couple down. They, the goalkeeper was taken off and they had a player on the sideline. Australia weren't able to, to get into their circle or to penetrate. So you've got to say that they kept their head in front and, and deserved the win in the end. And Cedric, two goals for Thierry Brinkman, a captain's performance from him and also player of the match. Well, I think, you know, the, the, the lucky break, a deflection balls in the circle are a killer on the defence and it, it lands very well for him and he just tips it home. Uh, a deserving captain, he led from the front, especially when they were 10, a man down with a yellow card, a sliding tackle by Thijs van Dam. And uh, still, Australia didn't score. They had 11 outfield players against nine outfield players of the, of the uh, Dutch. So the solid defence of the Dutch came to the, came to the party again. Well, congratulations to the Netherlands. A bronze medal for them to take home back to the Netherlands. So well done. Uh, we'll look now ahead to Germany versus Belgium. It's the men's final. We'll start with Germany and their road to get here. And here come the superstars. Here come the players. Germany are all in white. Germany get a professional opening win, as did Belgium earlier on. But at the end of this one, it's Germany three. They both know that a win here will put them in pole position to go through as Pool B winners. And a thoroughly entertaining contest that swung first Belgium away, then Germany's final score in this Pool B clash. Germany two, Belgium two. Here is Vellen. Lovely finish, Nicholas Vellen. And that was exceptional. And if Germany are going to go big here, they've started in the best fashion. Grid two, Germany seven, it finishes. The third crossover gets underway. So that was a stroke of luck for Milkow. And stroke of luck's help forward sometimes. The icing on the cake for Germany. Germany's response is unequivocal. Well, and they go 5 1 up. And Germany defy the odds, coming from two down with two minutes 20 remaining in the fourth quarter to score the two goals, take it to a shootout, and dump England out of the World Cup for 2023. Germany and Australia, no doubt, about to play out. Born in the Netherlands. Payat and he's found the goal. And Gonzalo Payat has a brace. Cross comes in. Well, he scored it! Well, on the scored it! Charter couldn't get a boot on the ball cleanly! And Germany have made their first World Cup final in 13 years. 
So Germany, two-time champions, are in the World Cup final again. There they are, just behind us, warming up in the All Black. Um, a very rocky road to get to the final. Plenty of excitement, Rick. Well, they've run the gauntlet, haven't they? During, during the round game, they, they had a tough match with Belgium. These two teams are going to meet again uh, in the final, but uh, that was a tough game. They were twice two goals down during the quarterfinals and semi-finals. That they got out of that is a testimony to their persistence, their quality and uh, their, their calmness, if you like, under pressure. And uh, they're in the final. Gonzalo Pay out there, we saw he got a hat-trick the other night, as well as an assist also with Velen on the far post. Uh, he's going to be an essential cog in the German wheel. Well, definitely, he has also, you know, apart from just the fact that he fires his rockets in penalty corners, he overlaps on the wide and he gets the ball in the deep pockets. And when he gets in the deep pockets, his crash ball in the circle goes right through the defence. And as you said very rightly, the last ball which is scored against Australia for the 4-3 win was basically the ball which came from Gonzalo and, and well, it it on the post. So he's a very important and a cog in the, in the, in the, in the German team. Okay, contrasting warm-ups going on. The Germans doing lap after lap. The Belgians are stretching the hamstrings just over my shoulder. And let's have a look at their road to the final as well. Belgium, of course, the defending champions. And here's how they got there. First goal for the Red Panthers. Lovely finish. And a third goal it is. And Belgium finally are running right. They're five to the good. Lovely skills from Charlier. Charlier gets a shot and he scores. Oh, what Victor Renier converts the pressure. Wide on the backboard. Belgium finally are running right. At a lovely height, there is no chance. They've got an able deputy. He's done it before and he does it again. Top bone. And Top bone scores as Alex Hendricks cheers his team from the stands. And it's Laurel Van Ogel who has scored it. With his seventh goal of the World Cup. It's shot by Oh, it's a terrible shot. Scores on the reverse. And then, then drives over the ball. And the signs goes the same way. Belgium defeat the Netherlands once again in a World Cup shootout here in the Kalinga Stadium. Another side that have ridden their luck a little bit along the way in the tournament then, Rick? Yeah, the, yeah they... Uh, they played pretty well during the round games they came back against Germany and uh, you've got to say that uh, uh, after that they look pretty convincing against New Zealand tough game against uh, the Netherlands though and lucky to get through in some ways on a shootout they've they've got good shootout form though both of these teams have so if we end up with a shootout today I, I wouldn't like to have to predict Went to a shootout, of course, in, in the final four years ago in Bhubaneswa, in the Kalinga Stadium. They've got that big match experience, but different opponents tonight. Well, you know, uh, past results don't mean a squat. You've got to just perform on the day. And today is the final, it's the biggest, man, biggest uh, match of the, of the tournament. Both teams have got to go for a win. And I think the, the Belgian team has a lot of experience in their ranks. But I think the Germans too have a lot of depth in terms of fighting back and unflagable spirit is something that we've got to think about. OK, we've got plenty of time to dissect this one, but we are just going to take a short break here before we get into the thick of it here in the men's final. Belgium versus Germany is on the way very shortly. You can see the teams just going through their warm-up routines and then we'll be back with some stick and ball after the break. में मेरे चाचा जी गुजर गए लेकिन मेरे नाम पर बहुत सारा पैसा छोड़ गए सारा पैसा मैं म्यूचुअल फंड में डाल दूंगा मेरा पैसा डबल तो हो ही जाएगा ना सर जी अरे रुको रुको मेरे दोस्त ये म्यूचुअल फंड है मैजिक फंड नहीं इसमें भी रिस्क होता है तो पैसा पहले किसी एक्सपर्ट को मिलो हर फंड के रिस्क और रिटर्न दोनों को बराबर समझने के बाद ही अपने पैसे को इन्वेस्ट करो समझ गया सर जी समझ के इन्वेस्ट करना है म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना ऐसी जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान ऐसी पढ़े अहमियत इस बात की नहीं कि आप किन बुलंदियों पर हैं, 
बल्कि इस बात की है कि यहाँ पहुंचने का हौसला किस से मिला देश की मिट्टी से कचारिया देश की मिट्टी से बनी टाइल से देश को बनाते हैं Watch the ICC Women's T20 World Cup starting February 10th on Star Sports Network and Disney Plus Hotstar. If I'm taking you with me, there's some rules you gotta follow. Rule one: we keep our histories to ourselves. Rule two: you don't tell anyone about your condition. Rule three: you do what I say when I say it. We're clear. What you say goes. Welcome back to Hockey Live. Germany versus Belgium on the way next in this year's Men's Hockey World Cup final. 243 goals along the way in the 43 matches that we've had so far. And here's our top three. So again, it's Ansel and Ward. Ward looking for Ansel. Ansel. Oh, what a goal from Liam Ansel. Have some of that. Liam Ansel with lightning hands. Lifting it up and over the number one runner and then dispatching it. What a bit of skill from Liam Ansel. They swap over. It goes to the right hand Carter. Oh, look at the reflection and they've got it. Oh, the variation is in and it's five all. Ruhr is high, he might get the ball, he does get the ball, he goes around the goalkeeper, he's got Bellin in support, he does not require him. Christopher Ruhr with a solo effort of some class. So three absolute crackers in there, what was your favourite out of them Cedric? Well, it's difficult to choose the all three different kind of goals, you know, the penalty corner was a brilliant one where Young uh, actually gets that ball, he shows he's going to flick, keeps the goalkeeper guessing and then puts it, you know, opens the face of the stick and then closes it and plays it back to the injector. Absolute precision at its best and that's a brilliant goal for me. Um, uh, Rick, what do you think? Yeah, well, I, I think I'll go for Ansel because uh, this is, I, I mean, the goal, the goal that's been described by Cedric, of course, was perfect and planned, but Ansel had to play it off the stick and uh, that, that's uh, for me. He lifted the ball, then he hit the ball on the on the volley. That's very difficult to do, and he kept it down. So that that was a pretty special one. Christopher Ruhr, I went the goalkeeper to get him at the top of the circle, you yeah. know, and uh, so uh, yeah, it, it was well finished. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I think there's an antidote for that one. Uh, one of the antidotes sometimes is the goalkeeper. They've been kept very busy during the tournament as well. And here's some of our favourite saves. of him. Terence Peters into the circle. Great save. What a save from Kim Jai John. A terrific action there. Shot at one end and Peters broke from the other end. He lined up. He had time. He hit the ball hard. Wonderful save by Kim. Oh, misses. Now down his right hand side. Makes the save. An excellent, excellent save from Pim and Blanc from Tom Bone. Now here's a chance. It's he ha! Great save from Patek and then a swing of the miss. Oh, Indian hearts in battles at that moment. Sam he ha with a golden opportunity. Patek though with a cool head and a firm wrist keeps the ball out of his goal. One of the shining moments for India there, their keeper at full stretch, springing around the like you used to do when you were a spring chicken, Cedric. 
Well, thanks for reminding me of my age, uh, Mike. But I think uh, there was a great save. You know, for a goalkeeper, a ball which comes about the height of uh, uh, his arm height is easier to save. You keep the balls along the ground, it's more difficult for a keeper. But that was a good save because he was well balanced and he had his hand extended well and the body coming forward, so the rebound went out of the circle. Don't always get an easy run in the tournament, do they, the goalkeepers? No, they don't. But the, when, when Peters broke away and he got well into the circle and hit the ball hard, that... Uh, that uh, leg save by Kim was uh, was remarkable, and he had he had some interference next to him. So, terrific, terrific work. I, I tend to second that one because you know when Terence hit that ball, there's Terry Brinkman lurking in front of the keeper, so the keeper had to watch that stick as well as a hit at goal, and he did it brilliantly well. That was a brilliant save. Excellent analysis. Thank you very much. We'll switch to our uh, top three moments of the day. That's up next. <laughs> Van Ass misses, Belgium are through to the final. Van Ass gets it caught underneath his feet, Van Ass needs to go, he has missed! Van Ass makes the save and Sonny Van Ass drops to his knees as Belgium defeat the Netherlands once again in a World Cup shootout here in the Kalinga Stadium. They can't from here, can they? Cross comes in, well, he scored it! Nicholas Fallon is the hero for Germany, with Australia down to 10 players. Martin Ferrero brings it into the circuit, up against Kim. Ferrero, that score, it's all over. He takes too long, and Argentina are out of the World Cup. Another massive upset in the evening session at this FIA Tradition Hockey Men's World Cup. Some huge moments in the Hockey World Cup so far and could there be more to come in this evening's final between Germany and Belgium? Quite likely. Well, you know, I've been, I've been backing Germany right through in terms of the way they've come back in all the matches, especially when they were a couple of goals down in, even in the semi-final. So uh, I still feel that this match is about experience against the, the methodical play of the Germans, and uh, I, still pilled, I still picked the Germans to win it. Uh, Rick? Well, yeah, if you look at those moments, two of them are from shootouts, um, I'm a fan of extra time, so uh, we could have the shootout after extra time. That, in, in my view, that would be more interesting. The other one, of course, is uh, the, the goal that Germany scored right at the end. And uh, Wellens w lurking on the far side, but the, the ball gets to him. I mean, if the Australians had missed it, he wouldn't have scored it. Or if they deflected it slightly differently, he wouldn't have scored it. Just fell for him. And uh, uh, <coughs> maybe that's a reward for persistence, because that what, that's what we saw for Germany. OK, well, let's get a vibe from both camps. Uh, we managed to catch up with Felix Denaire, and here's what he had to say. Well, we are in the finals now. The ambition was to uh, eventually to win a back-to-back. -back. So if we don't think we can win now, uh, I think uh, we can uh, fly home. No, obviously, uh, we're very happy to be uh, back into the finals, um, and hopefully we saved our best game for the last one. quality opponent, they have a lot of different threats, um, they have a really good structure and uh, yeah, they challenged us uh, the last month. The whole team um, is really improving and uh, they're hungry for a title, so uh, that's always a big threat, but um, I think we are too, so we're both very ambitious groups and uh, I hope the best, that the best may win. Belgium, of course, the defending champions as well, so maybe a little bit of extra pressure on their shoulders, and they faced Germany 12 days ago in Rao Keller, finished 2-2 in the pool. Yeah, and, and that, that's uh, justifiably what, what, what the outcome was. The, these two teams are very close. For Cedric and me, choosing uh, a winner is very difficult, and so uh, we're going a, a bob each way. <laughs> I think, you know, when you look at this team in terms of what uh, Denai just said, in terms of both are hungry, both want to win it, they want to retain their title and the Germans are hungry to just win this. But, you know, the, the key issue was the goal which Wellen scored, I would like to bring that back again, yeah. is that um, the ball came through Dawson and Jeremy Hayward. How did that ball go across two defenders? and it goes straight into the path of Nicholas Wellen lurking behind there to tap that ball in. So, for, you know, 
Sometimes you get the lucky break and that's how it is and they've got it a couple of times in this tournament. That's sport, isn't it, Rick? Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, uh, and the interesting thing for, for Belgium is, for instance, in, in the last two major finals, they've had Hendricks there and he's been a bit of the X factor for him. He's not playing and uh, they, they still have a, a, a dangerous corner, but uh, indeed uh, not having Hendricks may, may be important. OK, well, it's time to switch our attention to our Rookmat player of the day. And that is from Bel Belgium as well. It's Florent Van Obel. He's the number eight. He's had a sensational tournament. Great stamina, as we know, but an Olympic gold medalist in 2020, World Cup gold medalist in 2018, and Euro Hockey Championships gold medalist in 2019. What else do we like about this young man? Well, he's very clinical in the circle. You know, he doesn't actually... Uh, you know, drive forward with the ball like some other strikers do or midfielders do. But when he's in the circle, he's so clinical. He's, he's in the right place at the right time, gets in front of a defender, he's got soft hands and great tipping balls. If you look at some of the goals, he's actually hit a ball in the pads of the goalkeeper and followed up his rebound and put that ball in. So he's got a presence, he's got a nose for goals. Had him in year world 11 and, and the main squad as well of 16. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd have him in my team. I think uh, within five or six metres of, of the goal, his hands are as good as anybody. Uh, he's usually balanced. He's, he, he's, he's really quick. The other thing about him is, of course, he, he leads pretty well and he can win a corner and uh, that, that may be a crucial thing for them today too. Uh, who else should we be looking out for in that, in that Belgian squad? They're, they're pretty tidy. Well, Arthur De Sluwe, the defence has really played a solid game in terms of his marking and you know supporting the attack at times. Uh, he's got a he's got a wallop which goes right through the defence. Great penetrative passes. So Arthur De Sluwe for me in the defence and Felix Denaya in the middle, which and Vic with Victor Wigner, they are really good, big leaders who can give the slight pass actually and deceive the defence into the deep pockets. Okay, thanks, coach. Hold it there for just another couple of moments. We're going to flip over for a short break, but then we'll be back with more build up for the men's final Germany versus Belgium on the way next. बोला <laughs> वो शर्मा वाली जर्सी दिखाना ये लो ये नहीं दूसरी वाली <laughs> लगता है आपको क्रिकेट के बारे में ज्यादा नहीं पता <laughs> लगता है आपको इंडियन क्रिकेट टीम के बारे में ज्यादा नहीं पता दीप्ति शर्मा ये भी टीम इंडिया की प्लेयर है थैंक <laughs> यू इस रंग का सर दोनों ही ऊंचा करते हैं क्योंकि हिस्ट्री सिर्फ हिस्ट स्टोरी नहीं हर स्टोरी भी है देखिए टीम इंडिया का सफर आईसीसी वुमेन्स टी ट्वेंटी वर्ल्ड कप में ऐसे नहीं जानवर जंगल से बाहर आ जाते अगर अपनी भी आ जाए तो ना इंसान रुकता है ना जानवर और ये तो दोनों है इट्स गोइंग टू बी क्वाइट अ ईयर न्यू स्टोरीज दिस इज जस्ट द बिगिनिंग डेफिनेटली कैलवरी इज ऑन इट्स वे प्लस न्यू एडवेंचर्स दिस इज अ न्यू एडवेंचर फॉर बोथ ऑफ अस न्यू फेसेस वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग समवन एल्स There's only one place that's home to all of this and so much more. We're going to make this the best experience ever. Nicholas Vellum with six goals in the tournament. He got that winning and crucial goal to get Germany into the final cracking player. Well, you know he's got the he's got strength on the ball. Every time he receives it, he actually drives into the space, attacks that space, and if he's huddled by defenders, he'll find a foot and make a penalty corner. In the circle, clinical, and the far post tip is perfect. So basically, he is for me the game changer in German in the German team. 
missed the birth of his child to be here as well, Rick. I think um, baby arrived just after the Japan match. Yeah, that shows commitment, doesn't it? Uh, but but it's interesting. We, we've talked about a, a bunch of the players, Van Oibel. We've talked about uh, Wellen. These games aren't always won by the superstars. I remember the Olympic final in, uh, in London. Jean-Philippe Rabente scored two goals for Germany. In, in 1992 in uh, Barcelona, Michael Hilgers, two goals. They turned out to be the match winners. They weren't, they weren't the star players. They weren't the people that everyone was watching. So someone will pop up today and do something special, that's for sure. Might still be one of those guys that we've highlighted. Um, let's have a look at Gonzalo Payat, former Argentinian player, of course, plays for Germany now. He could be one of those guys that we expect to do well tonight to get those penalty corners, and he got a hat-trick the other night too. Well, he's got a powerful flick. He's, you know, he's got an Olympic goal with, with Argentina, and now he's playing for Germany, but he's got power and he's got deception in that flick. So yes, he could be a key factor, but the question is if he has to flick, the injection has to be perfect, the trapping has to be perfect, and his flick will go through. A little bit of deviation here and there, the flicker has to adapt. He's adapted well into this side. It can't be easy coming in when you, when you switch nationality. I don't think it's, div I don't think it's easy at all. And uh, watching earlier in the tournament, you just got the feeling that uh, in some ways he was an outsider. They didn't use him in all the corners. But uh, in the crunch game, when it was important, they used him. The good thing about him is he gets the ball away quickly. He's got a short action. Some of the others drag the ball for a long way, but he's got a short action and an enormous power. Uh, he, he, uh, he will be critical. And there's his opposite number up the other end, who we ex expect to do well this evening as well, Tom Bone. Well, you know, with the, with the injury of Henriks, Tom Bone has taken the mantle of taking on the flicks. But for me, apart from just the penalty corner, he has tremendous leading lines. He gets into the circle league and he passes the ball. He waits for the first phase, the second phase, and he's still leading for the third phase pass. He's always in the right place at the right time for a tip-in or a deflection. Seven goals in the tournament so far as well. It's predictions time and we'll start with you, Mr. Charlesworth. You know, Belgium uh, going to hold on. And for you, Cedric? I'm going to go the opposite. I've been saying Germany right through. Why? Well, because of the way they've played, the kind of defence structure they had. Yes, it's experience, but they have a great defence and they have a great counter-attack too. OK, well, we are just moments away uh, from Germany versus Belgium. They met in the quarter-final stages in the 2018 Hockey World Cup. Belgium winning that by two goals to one at the Kalinga Stadium. We have live commentary just around the corner of this one. It is the final of the FIH Adisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023. So come back and join us after the break. Take your seats. You've got just enough time to put the kettle on. And we'll see you after this very short break. Bye for now. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. How much time was your day? You're going to be a good day. You're going to be a good day. मुझे इतना जानना है की वकांडा हमारा दोस्त है या दुश्मन जवाब चाहिए तो आ जाओ वन डे सचिन ने इम्पॉसिबल को पॉसिबल कर दिखाया दिस इज एन इनक्रेडिबल मोमेंट Not even sure whether we'll ever see a moment like this in the game again. One day, ne Virat ko chasing ka king banaya. Fastest one day international century. One day, me Rohit ne ki records ki pocha. He's planning to score three double centuries in ODI cricket. One day, me kuch bhi mumkin hai. We made a mockery of a target of 360. What next are we going to see in world cricket? शुरू हो चुका है टीम इंडिया के ओडीआई वर्ल्ड कप का सफर अब से वर्ल्ड कप तक बिलीव इन ब्लू आपका इंट्रोडक्शन दीजिए मैं सुखू 
आपका आइडियल लाइफ पार्टनर कैसा होना चाहिए मेरा आइडियल पार्टनर चाहिए क्या बोलते हैं उसको हाँ फाइनेंशियली स्टेबल तुम तो वैसे ही बेकार हो जाओ चाय बना के लाओ बेकार नहीं हूँ कोरियोग्राफर हूँ और एकदम सुंदर सुशील शरीफ होना चाहिए नो लफड़ा बोल माल किधर है कौन सा माल बोल कौन सर कैप्ट यू बेटिंग तुम्हें जहाँ तक पढ़ना था उन्होंने पढ़ाया मुझे बी एस एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पढ़नी है उसका फैसला तुम नहीं करोगी समझ गए मुझे पढ़ाई करनी है बहुत हो गई तेरी पढ़ाई तुम्हारी कौन सी इच्छा को उन्होंने पूरा नहीं किया बताओ इससे पहले की खबर फैल जाए इसकी शादी करा दो इसके लिए लड़का देखना शुरू कर दो तुम मुझे पसंद करती हो आइंदा मुझसे पूछे बिना कितनी बार का ये फालतू की चीजें बताए कितने रूपए की वॉच है तुमसे हजार बार कह चुका हूँ हमने तुम्हारे लिए क्या नहीं किया बोलो तू तू अच्छी है ना देर इज समथिंग फ्रेश इन मुझे ये पूरा एरिया चाहिए किसी भी कीमत पर उनको लेके चल वहां के पास Hotstar Specials presents Arya Bar. No streaming. Sip Disney Plus Hotstar Bar. Ummeed se yakin tak khelega to chhaega. Ummeed ki mitti se metal tu banaega. Yakin tere andar to baar samandar kar ja. Take center stage. If you're ready to play, you better come this way. Got our game pieces up to the top. We're headed. What a shot! Play up, come on, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Glorious. Last story. Watch the ICC Women's T20 World Cup starting February 10th on Star Sports Network and Disney Plus Hotstar. Very good evening and welcome along to the Kalinga Stadium. It's the FIA Jodisha Hockey Men's World Cup final. It's an all-European affair. It's Germany against Belgium. Well, after 43 matches over 17 days, it's all come down to this. Germany playing in its first final since 2010 when they lost to Australia in New Delhi. Well, Belgium is in its second consecutive final and looking to become the fourth nation to successfully defend their title. Well, if you're just tuning in, there was more action earlier on today as Australia took on the Netherlands for third, and despite taking the lead, the Cookers were defeated by three goals to one. So it is Netherlands that will pick up the bronze medal later. But it's now all about the final. Will it be Germany? Will it be Belgium? The winner will be world number one. Well, Germany have really defied the odds to get to this point. Coming from two down, not only in the quarter final, but coming from a goal down, but with only what 1:27 remaining on the clock to beat Australia 4-3 in the semi-final. Belgium, well, they've been a little bit more uh, relaxed to, to this point, although they did require a shootout to beat the Netherlands in the semi-final, having drawn 2-2. So the hero top scorer tables looks like this coming into the final match. Jeremy Hayward. 
and leads the way on nine. Victor Charlet and Yip Janssen are tied on eight. Well, Thierry Brinkman and Tom Bone are on seven. Four players, including Nicholas Fellin, who plays tonight, are on six. A total of 239 goals have been scored over 43 games, an average of 5.6 per game. A fantastic venue, Aldrin of the Kalinga Stadium, and that is what they are playing for. Magnificent trophy. Since Belgium beat Germany in the quarter-final of the 2018 World Cup, there have been 13 meetings between the two. Belgium have been dominant, winning nine. Germany just won with three draws. This is their sixth World Cup meeting between the two. And as you can see, it is very even. Sir, Govinda, sir. Oh, sir, there was a mistake. Oh, mistake. Shadi, shadi, shadi. One shadi has to know. Shadi has to know. Shadi has to know. राजेश में क्या कमी है सुनो मैंने तुम्हें आजादी नहीं दी क्या हाँ तो फिर गहने के बारे में पूछा था क्या तुम सिर्फ दिखावे के लिए इसके भाई हो उसकी अपनी राय देने की आजादी मैंने उसे दी है मैडम ये सच है जया भारती सांप तो साला बेफालतू बनता है। चुपचाप सर जमीन से चिपकाकर अपने रास्ते चलता रहता है। अब उसकी पूछ पे पैर रखोगे, तो दंग तो मारेगा ना। बदला तो सबको चाहिए। और यो पार नो स्ट्रीमिंग सिर्फ डिज्नी प्लस हॉटस्टार पर। लोगों का अच्छा टाइम नहीं टिकता। अपना बुरा टाइम कितना टिकेगा? आई मैं � Let's football. Watch the Hero Indian Super League, 7 p.m. Coaches ahead of this one. Well, Belgium have their local supporters in. A fantastic atmosphere building. So the crowd are expectant. Paper this has the hallmarks of being a great contest, but let's see how the pressure of the situation delivers. But well, just as the teams will be dealing with the occasion, so too the umpires. Jakob Meslik and Steve Rogers on the field. A first World Cup for them and a first final. They officiated Germany's win over England and also Belgium's victory over the Netherlands. Arsene Groschal is the reserve with Kern van Bunga in the video on Bar's box. So, a pause in proceedings. The quiet before the storm as we await the entrance of the gladiators. The athletes who will go toe to toe to decide who lifts that massive trophy in an hour and a half's time or so. Germany finished second behind Belgium in Group B on goal difference after the two paid out an entertaining two-all draw. Since then, their paths have been rather different. Germany beat France, England and Australia in the knockout stages, the latter two thanks to remarkable comebacks, while Belgium saw off New Zealand and the Netherlands in a shootout in the semi-final. Well, suddenly Belgium used to this and so far as they were here four years ago at the Olympic final and the Olympic final in Rio, but now time for the guests for the pre-match, the Honourable Governor of Odisha, Professor Ganeshi Lau, 
Shri Eman Soren, Honourable Chief Minister of Jharkhand. Not a tie of Ikram Presidency of the International Hockey Federation. IOC Commission member and IOC Athlete Steering Committee member uh, joining them. Shri Bola Nath Singh, Secretary General of Hockey India. And they're accompanied by Commander R.K. Shravasta, Executive Director of Hockey India. So the guests have been presented to the umpires and the two captains. Go down for the national anthems. First Germany's, then Belgium's. Before we bring you the team news. Germany ro jatiyo songi to pain samasongu anurod thiya hi jibe. And please remain standing for the national anthem of Belgium. Belgium ra jatiya sangita pai samaste thiya hi rohantu. Raising stuff, the national anthems ahead of this hockey men's World Cup final. And Cedric de Souza alongside me in the commentary box. Here are the lineups. Well, you know, just look at Germany. They've got uh, three great players in Tom Granbush. You've got uh, Mark, uh, his brother Matt Granbush, and well in front. They are the mainstays of their team in defense. Granbush covers the space really well. Max is the creator, and Wellen is the finisher. These are the three main players in that squad. Gonzalo Pea there at number 16, also with a hat trick in the semi final. His first for Argentina, of course, a prolific goal scorer for Argentina uh, before his move across to Germany. And the likes of Christopher Ruhr on uh, the bench. So that's uh, Germany team news. Let's cross the other side of the technical bench and bring you Belgians. Well, you've got Vincent Manash in goal, who's had a blinder of the tournament so far uh, in defence. Uh, Arthur de Sluva, solid all the way through. Uh, Denier and Wegnes in front in the middle are the main distributors and controllers of the midfield. And Von Aval and Boone in front up there, finishing off and driving into space to try and get their goals. So that is what they are playing for. The men's World Cup trophy. And here is the Belgium squad, most of John John Doman, who of course missed the final four years ago because he fell ill and didn't get the chance to be here and lift the, the uh, trophy. And he'll be hoping 
that his side can continue and defend that title. 441 caps for John John Doman tonight. A phenomenal career and who's to say it's over with Paris just round the corner. But there are the two umpires for this one. Jakob Meslik, he'll be blowing up the left hand then as we look down. And Steve Rogers, the right hand then as they did in the previous knockout stages. But this is it. The final game of the FIH Odisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023. It's Germany up against Belgium, not only for the trophy, but also for the world number one ranking. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Germany in the all-black strip get this men's hockey world cup final underway attacking the goal away to our left hand side Belgium in the all-white I'd like to say joining myself Charlie Broom in the commentary box for this men's final Cedric to Susan Cedric fascinating clash going to play out in front of us let's just see this Germany attack as Nicholas Belling comes left to right Nicholas Belling still going and a great tackle by Arthur de Slova just relieves the early pressure. Two players that we picked out, or you picked out, Cedric, right at the start, showing their skills. Well, you know, this, this, the yeah, two European nations that know each other very well. We'll come back to that. And I'll stop you again because this time it's to Kerpel down the right hand side, and that's Rambush using good awareness not to turn back into traffic and go high and out to Germany's right hand side. Well, both teams have shown their intention immediately. Once in, immediately in that circle as well as in this circle and great presence of mind by Graham Bush to lift that ball across the circle out into safety. Lockhart. Oh right onto this stick of Ayaz. Free hit goes against Vigand. Lockhart. Leipart. Here is Andoran. Well, Charlie, at the moment, it's just a question of, you know, keeping possession, moving the ball around, uh, trying to penet penetrate the defence, uh, the German defence. Well, Bellin gets half a touch on it. And a chance here for Belgium. Kina spreading out the left-hand side. Andoran loses out to Hinnex, who uses his speed to come across and intercept. Van Doren will now try and win it back. But Henrik spins and plays it back out. Well, Henrik is actually one of the best interceptors in the world today in terms of he just cuts out the line so quick, he's so fast and as soon as he gets the ball, he sees the space and attacks it, opens up his vision to try and play the layoff passes. Andre Henning, the coach for Germany, of course, was a bronze medalist with the Germany men's side in Rio. Coach of Canada before, but Peter van der a huge amount of experience. Coached the Netherlands to World Cup bronze in 2010. He was the assistant to Shane McLeod back in 2018, but now he finds himself at the helm, looking to add yet another major trophy to his cabinet. He played, these two, sorry, have played each other four times. Well, this is the fourth meeting over the last three months. One win apiece and a draw. Both sides have scored five. Both sides have conceded five. I think that probably tells you all you need to know about the way this game might go this evening as you see the team sticking across the screen. Rambush important. Touch in the circle. Milk count. Now to the right hand side. Looking for Bellum, but they'll come back. But Charlie, you asked me before when we got involved in the game, it got so fast. So we looked at the fact about what was going to happen in this match. The Belgians like to attack, they play the give and go, they use the one-touch deflection to penetrate the defence, and you look at the crash balls from the wides, they're always looking for it, and Tangai Cousins is a master in that, he looks for the crash ball across. The Germans, with the methodical play, will try and control the midfield as much as possible, and use the penalty corner whenever they can. They believe that they can beat anyone, 
and come back from the death as well he's been proven in this tournament. Both goalkeepers, Banash and Stadler, have to be at their best today. Muller. Back to Vinfeda. Becker leaves it. Good lead to Payat. Payat at that was nearly off the leg if you know, but Nekomazic saw it. He was playing advantage. Yeah, really was key, wasn't he, in that semi-final, scoring three penalty corners and then providing the assist for Vellen. It's Germany now with a chance to apply some pressure inside Belgium red zone. I think Belgium have only worn their red strip once at this tournament. Been in white throughout, pretty much. Well, you know, some teams love to play with the same colour which they're winning with. And, uh, well, it's fortunate because the Germans have black, so they could wear the white. Behind by uh, Van Ost, who was a replacement for Alexander Hendricks at the start of the knockout stages. Hendricks, the top scorer at the World Cup. And the uh, doubles, that's brilliantly taken down by Picard. And John Pertz. Olympic, sorry, is going upstairs, is he? Oh, they are. Has been uh, Germany's asking for a stick tickle here. I had a situation in front of me, so can you just check it, please? I will check one more, please. Yeah. So, five and a half minutes in, and we go upstairs for the first time. Lawrence Ludwig believes. Well, he's coming along the baseline. There's a stick check, and I think it looks like if it's in the circle, it's a penalty corner. That's dangerous play, but it's picked up very well by the defence. Work hard. Well, it's definitely a stick check. Where does it take place? Outside. Okay, happy. Jakub, I have a decision for you. It's a penalty corner, and Germany keep the referral. Yeah, horrible looking stick tackle. Well, the 3D skill comes, in, comes into play. Ludwig comes along the baseline, looking with the 3D skill, which is very really difficult to defend at times, because if you touch the stick, it's a penalty corner, and that's exactly what they got. So, Germany converted 16% of their penalty corner, 6 from 37. Belgium have conceded 2 of 17. It is Vinfeder on the right. And 16 is Payat, he's on the left-hand castle. In it comes, it goes to Payat. Payat, run down by Gunard. Gonna be a real award. A good number one running on that occasion. Well, Gunard's run out is absolutely brilliant. He's covering up the complete left hand side, puts a stick between his leg, his ricochets off the stick onto his leg, and a re penalty corner. Now, Nash was moving a little bit to his left hand side. Crashes the bar with his stick. Same line up at the top of the circle. Again, it goes to Payat. Payat, good number one only again by Gunard. And a little look from Jakob Mesnik. He's happy that that was off a stick. Good running by Aruz into the circle it goes, and it's going to be cleared by Van Ash, left footed. And then Bocard just tips it away to Van Ost. The only will come again. Picker. From Grambush. Well, if you just look at that flick. It goes off Simon Gunnard's uh, stick actually, and then the clearance by the defense, low at the experience to take the ball out when there was so much pressure on the goal. They had thrown a long, long diagonal ball across to Moritz Ludwig on the right hand side. Here is Ludwig. Grambush plays it inside for Milk Cow against Germany and they try to get it away quickly and here is the chance for Charliet. Charliet opening cup with the signs then better lets it roll over the back line. Well, you talked about the, the transfer ball by Pelak down across the other side. That's changing the point of attack completely. The defense has to move from one side to the other side and in that movement if the ball is picked up quickly the crash ball can go in.
is to bet in the Euro Hockey Championships final, but never in the World Cup final. And tonight, indeed, the Euro Hockey Championships meeting came in 2013 in Belgium. Germany won that by three goals to one. Remarkably, there are three players remaining from Germany from that. Eight, Belgium. Usually their longevity. Charlier rolls it inside to John John Doman. He puts it on to uh, De Kerpel. De Kerpel has a little look up. He comes back out to Kina. And this is Leipart. Wenye away to his right-hand side if he wants. Leipart goes all the way back to the left-hand side to Van Ost. Kina once more. Germany pushing Belgium back round the other side. Here's Van Obel. Careful. Trying to pick out the Slova. It's a good defensive work. Again, coming in from Trompertz this time. Trompertz driving forward, getting his head up, looking for the pass. Trying to slide it just inside the left shoulder of the Slova. Looking for Muller. Over equal to it. Well, it's, uh, actually, if you look at the Slova's positioning, He's actually ex giving the fake space to play the ball inside there and he puts the stick down flat and, and intercepts that ball. He's giving you the option to play that ball and enticing you to do it. Well, those rankings are going to change this evening because whoever wins will have the number one after their name. It doesn't matter if it's one in regulation time or if it's one in the shootout. Different calculations if you don't do it in 60 minutes. But either way, one of these two will be world number one. The question is who? Bombone! That's great defensive work from the younger of the two ground bushes, Tom. Oh, what a finish from Van Obel, is it? It is Florian Van Obel who half volleys it past the keeper. Nothing really that Stadler can do. And we have our first goal with 5.35 remaining. It's Florian Van Obel. Well, again, it's a lucky deflection, but it comes on to him. He hits it bang on, on the bounce. There's no chance for Stadler in goal, but it's just the deflection which penetrates the defence. He picks it up on the reverse, gets his body in line, and we've been talking about him in the, in the circle. He's got a clinical finish, and he's on target most of the time. This one, a beauty pass left-hand side of Stadler. Well, it's his third goal in the tournament. Second from open play, one penalty corner, but he is the difference between these two in the early stages of this men's World Cup final. Well, early goal always helps things, Cedric, doesn't it, from a neutral's perspective? Well, definitely it does help in terms of now getting the other team to move forward. And, and you know when you look at it it's the lucky break of a deflection again it's always a deflection of Kino's defence Kino as he intercepts the ball it falls to Tom Bow. here is Kino once more Kino onto the reverse stick across the face a goal it's turned in it's a second this time it's Kasai Germany are going to the top of the circle for the challenge I think that Tom Bow made but I, I'm not sure that really affects play <laughs> Kun? Yes, Steve. Um, Germany won a team referral. Can you just check the um, the attacker on the line, whether it hit his foot or his stick? I will check. One moment, please. Well, from our position, it definitely looked like stick, but let's see. Germany not, can't go two down again, surely. But if we just look at the body language now, there doesn't seem to be so much stress. They're talking about how to get better. Okay, let's have a look. Kina. I think that was stick. Yeah, hand on stick. That is a goal. 
For me, it's a goal too. The crash ball comes in from Kino right across the defense. Steve, yeah. it's a goal and Germany lose their referral. So not only is it a goal, but Germany have lost their team referral. Mats Grambusch just asking the question. I, I think that is fair enough. And Andre Henning has got to try and get his team out of a 2-0 hole again. Well, you know, you know, this is not exactly what the Germans want. 2-0 down in the first 10 minutes of a team which has had a strong defence, which they've talked about. Well, Cedric, my memory serves correctly. Willem van Ogel score at 5.35, and then they've just stuck the ball in at 4.51. That's, um, that's, not, that's 44 seconds. That, that even beats Germany's record for scoring two goals back to back. They were 47 seconds against England. Well, you know, it, that's exactly, you get half a chance and, and you take it, you capitalise on these opportunities, the experience of this team, they find that space and they quickly exploit it as quickly as possible. Oh, God. Oh, it's going to be a bad stand, a great save from Kassainz, a really important save and Germany are a little bit rattled here. Well, the Germans are giving easy turnovers. That's now just hold possession for a little while. And that's good defence from Payat. Doman. I count to Leipart. But again, 3.20 remaining in the first quarter. Belgium lead by two goals to nil. There is Tenge Kassainz, who uh, missed out on the World Cup four years ago. But he finds himself on the scoreboard. And here's another chance. This is Tom Bone. Bone spinning back. And uh, good tackling from Payat. Comes off Charlier and it's a 16. Well, the Belgian team using all the experience in the circle trying to force penalty corners. But Palat doing very well to trap that ball. And it goes off Charlier for a free hit for Germany. Well, Germany. Two down against England for the finals. Two down against Australia in the semi-final. Two down against Belgium in the final. Surely, history is not going to repeat itself for a third time in this competition. And it's already repeated itself a third time in terms of Germany coming from back from the dead to win a game. But surely, they can't do it for the third consecutive match. It would be extraordinary. I think they have the belief in themselves to come back. At the moment, the, the, the Belgian team is really holding, holding all the cards. And from that aspect, the Germans need to get back into the drawing board, go back at, at the quarter time and talk and figure out how to break this team. They can't chop that ball. Oh, we've been fed up. Tom Grambush. Have another look at this second goal from was Keener. Gets the ball back from Tom Bone on the reverse stick. Fantastic. Chance here! It doesn't quite fall for Rua. When you look at that replay again, the German players stand behind the defender, not his ball watching. He's not on the player at all. There's Pellat. Pellat's not there. Yeah, but, but, but Muller's in front and he's missed the ball. It's squeezed between Muller's stick and the end of Stadler's kicker. But I agree. Pellat needs to be in closer attendance. Brambush. Goes long. 
That's well taken down by his brother Mats. Back to Ruhr. Ruhr gets to go. This is the way the free hit, but lovely combination between the two Grandbush brothers. Inrix picks up and off he goes. Drops it back inside. I don't think that uh, Grandbush was expecting that one. And there is the quarter time Hooter. Well, four years ago, we were goalless all the way through. Not this time, because the Sainz and Van Obel have combined to give the defending world champions a huge advantage at the end of the first quarter. It's Germany nil, Belgium two. The digital coverage of the FIH Odisha Hockey Men's World Cup is brought to you by Kajaria Tiles and Mutual Fund Sahi Hai. अहमियत इस बात की नहीं कि आप किन बुलंदियों पर हैं, बल्कि इस बात की है कि यहाँ पहुँचने का हौसला किस से मिला? देश की मिट्टी से, कजारिया, देश की मिट्टी से बनी टाइल से देश को बनाते हैं। शैलेंद्र रुंटा एक आर्म्स डीलर है जो लोगों के खून से पैसा कमाता है। शैली की लंका गिराने के लिए मुझे अपना व मुझे छुबी पाना इंडियन इंटेलिजेंस के बस की बात ही नहीं है। वो तुम्हें जिंदा नहीं छोड़ेगा। जिंदा तो मैं पहले भी नहीं था। The Night Manager, 17 फरवरी से Disney Plus Hotstar पर। Times before. This is the first ball. Have a look at the ball boy, top of the screen. There he goes. Good field of the, uh, of the bouncing ball. This is a tidy finish, this Cedric. Well, you know, soft hands, receives it, gets his body to position, gets it on the bounce. All perfection, all the way through. The lucky, there was a deflection from Prince onto Oros, onto Van Abel. They've all been mainstays of this team. It's just an incredible story. What we've talked about. Second quarter underway. Germany nil, Belgium two. Germany going to try and dig themselves out of a, another hole. But it's been a common theme in this uh, World Cup. Zealand two down against India, one. Australia two down against Spain, one. Germany two down against England, one. Germany two down against Australia, one. Well, it's... <laughs> yeah, they're going to oh, do it sorry, again. sorry, and I forget. Korea, two down against Argentina, one. Well, this is the final, you know, and, and the experience of the Belgian team will come, will come to play. I think uh, Matthias Muller goes to ground a little easily there. I think he realises he's beaten and he could get in trouble if he... It up, you know, that's too easy. That's Van Van Obel straight down through the middle on a penalty corner, and they can't refer it. And I have to say, I think it's because they got Van Obel's stick caught up in the German defender's stick. Yeah, but your, your sticks are up near his head, so just, just keep it down, okay? That's it. The first penalty corner for Belgium. Van well, Obel gets that ball in the circle. He looks up, finds the flash stick coming on to him, but Ruth, and then he lifts the ball across, and he's hampered. His stick is picked up by Ruth and blocked by Ruth, and a penalty corner for Belgium. I think that's the right decision. I think had they had the referral, they would have lost it there as well. Well, he was talking about the ball being high. The signs on the left, Leipard on the right. It comes to Kasai's, has one already. There is uh, Bakar, that's a great save. Super save from Stadler from the slip. Gauthier Bacard with a whisker of making it three. Hina goes to the goal line, picks up uh, Gunard. That's come all the way across and picked up by Muller. And he finds Nicholas Vellard. Vellard. Vigan trying to make some space in the middle for Vellard. He doubles back, drops it out to Payat. But you look at that ball, he slipped 
And Bokal flicks, but Stanton does very well to get the ball onto the left-hand side. He moved his body right across. Right down the middle of the flick. There is. Well blocked by Wenye. And here goes Wenye. Cards to Charlie. Charlie. Lovely hands. And well, that just shows the dominance the Belgium have had. And yet to trouble Van Ash. Well, in the first quarter, for the first, I think, 15 20 seconds, the Germans got into the circle there with Valin, and then immediately the ball went into the other circle, and after that, it's just been Belgium all the way. Leipard into the circle, lovely little touch from Charlie A. Uh, Ludwig combines trumpets to get it out of the circle. chance to hear their lines. Charlie, every time Nicholas Bellin gets the ball, you will find a double team on him. They're not allowing him any space. As soon as he goes, he loves to attack the space and you can see one player putting pressure on him and the other player just came, you know, cutting into the space. He doesn't, get, doesn't allow him to cut inside. I haven't seen a great deal of him to this point, have we? Bellin. That early... 40 into the Belgian circle and then he's had a little run earlier on with the left hand side and he manages to shift the ball on and in it comes from here and here the charge for Forrester that has to be yeah this has to be this is probably going to be a stroke this could be a stroke here uh, stop Steve did he okay good he played the ball with the body straight right yeah when yeah, he's I was taking the stick or the body that is the right decision. Could it not be a card as well? I don't know. Well, I think it's a, if you're going deliberately with your body, apart from the stroke, it's actually... Uh, uh, oh, he's just cleared it out with his feet. And that's... Uh, it should be a card. Well, I was about to say, if you double team up on Velen, there's going to be space elsewhere, and Germany just exploited that space. Well, exactly, you know, every time they get the ball, it's their vision to look and see what is available and pass the ball into the space. So, Tom Grambush already has two penalty strokes to his name. And Ash is uh, coming out. Went on, go! We go with the stroke. Oh, plenty of chat. Here we go then. Chance here for Tom Grambush to half the deficit. Grambush against Van Ash. This is what a pick. What a save from Vincent Van Ash. He's got his right stick up to pluck it out of the top corner. Urban's above. What a save that is. Well, I think, you know, he's looked at his, his old book and you look at it, he's moved across quickly on the right-hand side, got it onto the stick and onto the post and out. But they have a book on the flickers, pet angles. Well, that is the side that uh, Tom Grambush went against England. And Germany, well, against England. They weren't, they were two down and they missed a stroke. Still came back to win, but heavens, I wonder what is going through Andre Henning's mind. What an opportunity that was for them to get back in. Paul Revington, head coach of England. He wished he might have been in this game, but I think he's going to be enjoying this. Have another look, Cedric. Well, a great shuffle and just moves to the right hand side, body weight forward, balanced completely. Driving through the stomach, stick extended, hits the stick and goes onto the onto the post and out. And look at him, he's telling himself, you know, he's telling the, his, his, his team, 
banging his head and saying, you know, he remembers uh, the flick. Hey, man. Yeah, good umpiring from Jakob Messi. He wasn't sure. He went to his, his fellow umpire. He helped him out because he can't see from that angle. He can't see if that stick or body. Well, Every, everybody on this side of the stadium could see it clear as day. Well, that's exactly. You need the umpires, and they have the walkie talkies to figure out and you know help each other. And if it came to a situation, he could have even referred it in terms of asking for a referral. Bella with a bit of space, Bocard back, a little jab tackle to uh, disrupt the Germany number nine. Tim Pellet doesn't get enough on it, Charlier brings it down, but uh, Zvika doesn't give the space required. Van Doren stands over it. Waits for his teammates to do their change of lines. The signs doesn't bring it down cleanly, but it does stay in play. Henrix with the tackle. Bowman. There is the Slova. Back to Doman. Oh, we saw the number of shots. Unsurprisingly, therefore, dominating possession as well. The journey have now had a shot. Well, that's Grambush. Looking towards the midpoint of this second quarter, Tom Grambush. Three hit off uh, the sides, fires it in. A real deflection of uh, Max Grambush. A real good hard crash ball going across the defence there. And the far post then Milkow hits the ball across the line. Well, Mil well came off Van Doren, but from Jeremy's way that. And Rua. Laying it down the right hand side. Is this the chance for Jerry to the goal? And they come back across into the circle. Uh, De Slova at the first line. And then Van Doren gets it out of harm's way to Charlier. Charlier looks to go down the line. Ogunard. Captions have been called over. Listen him. Now it's on you. Every single token is going to be a card. We don't want to this. We play hockey. Play hockey. Can I just? The problem is it's, it's consistent. Your colleague is showing a different That's direction. fine. That's so, fine. So I got it. Understand. But still, the keep the emotions the down, yeah, right? right? Well, let's hope he doesn't come to that because uh, discipline could be key. I mean, Belgium have only picked up two green cards within this tournament. Jeremy seven green and two yellows. That's that's a big difference. And two nil down. Germany can ill afford to have players off the park. I say that hesitantly because they did lose Ruhr two down against England and still managed to win. Well, it's the experience of the of the Belgian team in terms of you know um, not giving cards so easily. Prince. To Grambush, space on the right hand side. If he can find Henrix, oh, that's not a great ball from Grambush. And as a result, Henrix can't attack that right hand flank and he's got to come back to his uh, central defenders. Now he can get a chance. Henrix. Action's not there with Max Grambush. I think the indoor style of hockey by playing these small connections is breaking down because of the, the hurried passes they're doing. Just a little bit more patience will help them. Three hits on that far side. 
for Belgium. Lead Germany by two goals to nil. Goals coming in uh, one first quarter minute. In fact, less than that. 45 seconds, 44 seconds, something like that. Look over the top of Ruz, has to be careful, stops himself well, but Gunard now into the circle down the right-hand side, plays it under Ruz. There is uh, is Muller to bring it out for Germany. Pinfeder, Muller. 11 players down in that corner, Cedric. That's going to make life very difficult to get them, for Germany to get it out. Deep in the pocket, trying to put pressure as much as possible, trying to win, win the ball and try and attack it. Uh, question is, the Germans are really strong in those pockets because of indoor, actually. Belgium favouring the left in this final. Throughout the tournament, they actually preferred the middle. That's where most of their attacks have come. This the plays on the left-hand side. The Charlie Doll depends on the way the other team is playing. So if you get a chance to go from the left, you'll break it, break it there. Or sometimes you'll go through the centre. Of course, the centre is the most dominant way to go through and most dangerous. You know. His foot. And hit Belgium. You know, Bellier. Comes Kina. Kina into Van Obel. Van Obel away from Feder. With a really good tackle. Hurts. Still going, Chompertz. Excellent running from Boris Chompertz. Brewer. High pass off of Van Doren, who was in the line to Prince. High Park goes underneath the shoulder, back to Live Park once more. Now he throws the big aerial ball, but that has been put the Germany edge. Charlie, every time the Belgian team gets the ball in the opposition quarter, there is something dangerous. They make it count in terms of, you know, uh, keeping possession, whereas the Germans are, seem to be losing possession quite easily and the final pass not being exactly where they want to go. The connections are being broken quite easily. Card, there is. his eye off it and it rebounds or deflects to Van Obel. Here is Charlier. Oh, that's going to hurt. That is going to hurt a lot. A card on the Ruse. He's just jogging off the far side. Well, the ball has risen onto the knee, just below, on, just over his shin guard, and uh, he's, he's uh, just going to get some medical attention. Cambush. Okay. Now, no count. To Hinrichs. Hinrichs looking for Melkow. That's onto the foot of Kina. And there is a penalty corner with 126 remaining in the first half. Germany with their third penalty corner of the contest. This is a huge chance now. Germany to try and get back in this one. 
Theo Hendricks plays that ball across. It comes into the circle. It ricochets off a noble stick and goes on the Kina. It's a lucky break for Germany. There was no pressure on either of them. So Wim Feller nearest to us. Tom Grambush on the right-hand castle. It comes into Wim Feller. Good save again from Van Asch. And a real ward as Max Grambush goes in. Wim Feather's flick is to the left-hand side of the keeper. He sticks his arm out and palms it. There's a lot of pressure on that ball. The defenders do very well. And Van Obel actually gets that ball and the re penalty corner on his foot. Same set up. Again, it goes to Wim Feather. Now it goes across to Tom Grambush. Takes a the deflection. There is... Uh, Venom is in! Venom plays it across the face of goal. It takes a deflection off of a treating Belgian defender. It goes down as Nicholas Vellen's goal. And it's Germany that are back in it with 1.14 remaining in the first half. Nicholas Vellen on target once again. Well, you know, there's a Wilfeder plays the ball across, a variation. It goes off a deflection of the second wave. Ball bobs off. Well, and look at his soft hands and look at his presence of mind. Goes onto this, into his stick, up in the air, and just taps it across the far corner by the post oh, inside. Yes, it isn't. It isn't a deflection. It is a wonderful finish from Nicholas Vellen. What a goal from the Germany number nine. His seventh goal of the tournament. His first from a penalty corner. How important will this be? Well, definitely because it's just a minute or two to win it to go into the into the third quarter and it's good to get a goal back because now the game will open Denea picks out Charlier Denea throwing uh, improvised aerial but I think it was just too close to uh, Valen and Ludwig what a fabulous ball if it was allowed because it was right across the entire defence and Tangai Cousins on the far, far end just waiting for that long ball. Brilliant. It's, it's within the five, so it's a foul. But from a logical point of view, right across for a fabulous, fabulous uh, change of attack. And Grambush doesn't get hold of that one. Has it been taken? Yes, it has. Good catch, sir. There is the half-time hooter. Has it been caught? Oh no. Anyway, the teams head to the locker room and it's evenly poised courtesy of Nicholas Vellens. Strike just before the half-time break. Germany back in this one. Germany one, Belgium two. Sir, Govinda, sir. शादी शादी है एक शादी ने तो जान ले जान नहीं लेगी kept you waiting Rajesh mein kya kami hai Suno maine tumhe aazadi nahi di kya ha to phir gehne ke bare mein poocha tha kya tum sirf dikhave ke liye iske bhai ho uski apni rai dene ki aazadi maine use di hai madam ye sach hai jaya bharti सांप तो साला बेफालतू बता चुपचाप सर जमीन से चिपका कर अपने रास्ते चलता रहता है अब उसकी पूछ पे पैर रखोगे तो डंक तो मारेगा ना 
बदला तो सबको चाहिए और यो पार नो स्ट्रीम में सिर्फ डिज्नी प्लस हॉटस्टार पर Gonzalo Payat enjoyed that one. Well, a fitting venue for this men's World Cup final, Linga Stadium in Bhubaneswar, and it is buzzing. Let's have a look at the stats at half time, and Belgium. Well, they are dominating all of it, Cedric. But the one they are not dominating as much as they had hoped. Is the top one, which is uh, goals. डायरेक्ट प्लान म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम्स में खुद इन्वेस्ट करने का एक ऑप्शन है म्यूचुअल फंड्स खुद ही सी जैसे मैंने फिट रहने के लिए ट्रेनर रखा तो दिखता ही है भाई पर तू तो सेल्फ मेड है भाई वेल देख मुझे फिटनेस की नॉलेज है तो आई मेड माय ओन ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम और तेरे ट्रेनर के पैसे भी बच गए हां सेम विद डायरेक्ट प्लान या मेरे कमीशन के पैसे बच गए सही है म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना से जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान से पढ़ें Take center stage. If you're ready to play, you better come this way. Got a game, this is up to the top. We're headed. What a shot! Play on, come on, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Glorious. Last one. What a World Cup! Watch the ICC Women's T20 World Cup starting February 10th on Star Sports Network and Disney Plus Hotstar. सचिन ने इम्पॉसिबल को पॉसिबल कर दिखाया दिस इज एन इनक्रेडिबल मोमेंट नॉट इवन शो वेदर वील एवर सी अ मोमेंट लाइक दिस इन द गेम अगेन वनडे ने विराट को चेसिंग का किंग बनाया वनडे इंटरनेशनल सेंचुरी वनडे में रोहित ने की रिकॉर्ड्स की पहुंचा थ्री डबल सेंचुरी इन ओडियाई क्रिकेट वनडे में कुछ भी मुमकिन है शुरू हो चुका है टीम इंडिया के ओडियाई वर्ल्ड कप का सफर अब से वर्ल्ड कप तक बिलीव इन ब्लू A movie Butterfly is streaming in Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam and Kannada. Do watch it only on Disney Plus Hotstar. Uranium. Wo mein kahan se mila? Degu Hart se sir. Mujhe ye pura idea chahiye kisi bhi keemat par. तबाह हो जाएगा। उन्हें लगता है हम टूट चुके हैं पर यह उनकी गलत फहमी है इट्स गोन बी क्वाइट न्यू स्टोरीज दिस इज जस्ट द बिगिनिंग डेफिनेटली Plus new adventures. This is a new adventure for both of us. New faces. Peter Pan. We're expecting someone else. There's only one place that's home to all of this, and so much more. We're gonna make this the best experience ever. Don't ever mistake me for a man in an expensive suit. 
छोटे सूट के पीछे वाले आदमी से मुलाकात ना ही हो तो अच्छा है Welcome back to the Kalinga Stadium. We're at half time in the FIH Odisha Hockey Men's World Cup final. It's Germany 1, Belgium 2. Well, the fans will be uh, much to talk about in the half time break. Belgium going into a 2 0 lead, but the Germans getting the goal back. Let's have a look at this uh, first goal for Belgium, the Libero. Well, a lucky deflection, and Manobel picks it up brilliantly, and a smash on the bounce. Short handle, quick feet, quick hands, and into the far corner. Um, interception, Pina. Look how far he runs with the ball. Besides, edging his bets on the back post. Ayat, really in no man's land. That was 2 0. Well, I think we can get down to here some uh, half time reaction from the coaches. Andre, great time to score and keep this game alive. Yeah, what was not the worst moment, to be honest, right? But yeah, we had the opportunities before. So uh, we had the stroke and some good chances, PC before. So we were really there. We didn't have the best start, but uh, it feels like we are in this game now. What message will you convey to the players at halftime? Uh, keep on going like that. So I think uh, the game is falling to our side. Uh, be patient. Uh, don't look on the scoreboard. I think uh, the end was always ours. And uh, uh, let's get it on our side again. Keep going. Good luck. Thank you. Michel, message to the boys at halftime? Well, we, uh, we were happy to the way they were performing. Um, we fine-tuned a little bit in our press. Uh, and uh, another thing what we pointed out is uh, keep on daring to play, attack them as well. And then we get the, the right momentum. So really interesting. It's a great final. How do you ensure the Germans don't come back for a third match in a row? Be sure that they're in the plane. Good luck. Thanks. A reference to uh, Germany aren't on the bus yet because they fight to the very end. It's fascinatingly poised and the body popping is keeping everyone entertained if the action on the field is not. Belgium get the second half of this men's World Cup final underway. Attacking the goal away to our left-hand side. It's Germany 1, Belgium 2. Germany coming back into this one the end of the second quarter here's a chance for Bellin that's a great defensive touch by Van Doren and Sergio what did you make of the, the half time chat or interviews with the two coaches well they're always going to not say much in terms of it but I think what they probably would do is the Germans would move pressure on the ball and they would kind of be more clinical in their final pass and be a little more patient that's the, and then the clinical uh, probability will increase in terms of giving a proper pass as far as the Belgians are concerned they're going to transfer the ball much more and fire because this is what the chink in the armour of the, the German defences the crash balls in the circle well, Germany they do come from two down they won't be the first team to come from two down in a World Cup final 1973 the Dutch were 2-0 down against India Came back to win the final on penalties 4-2. 1998, the Dutch were two down against Spain. Ended up winning that one. 3-2 after extra time. As Germany get it here through Henriks. And finally, Germany were 3-1 down to Australia in 2006. Came away with the trophy 4-3. What well, would be remarkable is if for a third match in a row, Germany came from two down to win. Well, 
Well, they, they never say no or never give up till the final minute because that's what they've done in the last six seconds against Australia. They got that fourth goal. Let's see what teams are in or a number of teams Japan, the Netherlands, and also I've seen them. Ballon, nicely done. Drops it out to Prince. Prince comes back inside Kina. Still going Prince, and again, there is the Slova. Pop off thicker stick. Argentina. Some of the interceptions that the Slova has made so far in the entire in the first two quarters and in this even in this last ball which came into the circle he's there at the right time strong solid defender lovely hands from Kina to get away from others and spreads it out to the right hand side and Naya, lovely sliding ball down onto the goal line but Charlie couldn't control it Graham Reed but that slight pass by Palestina is actually one of his pet movements. He does it so often it deceives the defense completely. And they have that. They play the ball into the circle deep in the pocket. And it's a one-touch deflection again played into the middle of the circle. It's absolutely brilliant. On Grand Bush, Wenye. Lovely interception from the Belgian number 26 sliding into the circle. And that was not touched by Dockier. A credit to Dockier too for not trying to claim the touch. Well, a great ball played by Vinier. Looks up, sees a gap. Again, a sliding ball past the left of Tom Gambush into the space and the ball is deflected. Yeah, Ruz has just, sorry, Ruz has just picked up another card. This is his fourth green card of the tournament. You can see what it was for. Gunard. This big of the head. Ruz. Their discipline could be key. But how many times in this tournament have you seen a team which has had a player down, the other team getting a goal against them? It's been so often. Yeah, oh, this more rather late challenge on Gunard. He was rather disappointed. He was stopped in his prime. He was making good headway down that right-hand side. Well, I think a little unfortunate because the Slover was quite late onto the scene there as he was receiving. Circle from Muller. Comes to Milk out. Milk out. Bellin. Oops. Brings back round. Charlie, we haven't seen much of Christopher Ruhr. He's he's a game changer. He can make such a lot of impact on his on the on his in the attack. But we haven't seen him stand out in, in this game. Although he's played well in the tournament in terms of of his assists. Muller going across the park and it's picked up by Velen. Velen with that right to left drag. Velen onto the reverse stick. Now gets it strong. Fires it across. Half cleared by Van Ash and Gunard will complete it. Cross to uh, Rupp Van Doren and Germany are back up to 11. Let's have another look at this. A good pick up by Valen. Moves to the left hand side with a beautiful inside out dodge and then plays the ball across. But enough of defenders there and Vinash does well to pat that ball away. And John Doman dropping it out to Anust. Well, you know. Well, you know when the ball is being crashed inside like that, but well in play. There's no German player in the in right in front. They're only standing behind the defence. They have to be in front, so they put a bit of, you know, 
uh, pressure on the defenders. Bowman, a no ball. There is Kassainz. Thing coming from the umpire, Jakob Meslik. Here is Milkow. Nobody in front of him. Will drop back onto Keener's foot. Will win Germany the free hit. Well, he, he, he just said there was nobody in front of him, so he couldn't play the ball. But he held possession and kept possession. Otherwise, you know, if he had crashed the ball, there would, no, there would have been a loss of possession and a counter attack on them. Almost a reflection of the scoreline. Grambush. In Fedder. Grambush once again. Head up. Trying to find that ball into the circle. But wants to go to Payat on that left hand side. He goes down the line. Then an injection of pace. By, uh, from Pertz, we hit to Germany. Rambush has to move this five. Does. Yes. Good ball possession this from Germany. How can they do something with it? Fella, got and over the top. And there, Trompertz. Trompertz work from uh, Bernos. They retreat quickly. Gets a stick down. Oh, there's a touch from Milkow, and there is Van Ash to make the save once again. Oh, lovely skills from Muller. But just look at that ball being played right into the circle and a tip right there by Melkow and Vanash doing very well back in the center. Yeah, the Kerpels just picked up a green card for a sort of a lazy tackle. And not only Belgium under the cosh, they now have one less outfield player. Good leave from Trompertz. Gets all the way across to pay out. He slides it into the early stroke spot. Here is Gunard. Gunard still going. Trompertz back on the edge of the circle. Wins the free hit for Belgium. Here's to Kerpel. Gunard. Free hit. If you look at Gunnar's run, they That's was it. alone with four or five German players, but still had possession. The card flash on Brownbush's stick. Shout. In fed up. In Ricks. Out off the Slover's foot. And I don't think so. That is Steve Rogers. Brewer. Pulls it back to the top of the circle. John Pertz has Henrik to his right hand side. Penalty corner. I think it was Tangai Cousins who had a little bit of body play on that pass. A spin and that body play there, blocking the movement of Trumpets. Down to Tan and a penalty corner. Well, Payat is there on the left hand, Castle. Can he find a way past? Here he is. Yes, he can. Gonzalo Payat brings Germany level with 4.08 
remaining in the third quarter. A second penalty corner goal for Germany. And it's Germany 2, Belgium 2. Mepela gets the ball and he slings it past uh, Vanash. Vanash just goes off his foot looking for the wide angle, just close to his feet. Has no time to react. Well, this extraordinary game keeps giving. And a very similar spot to where Payat scored against Charter, just outside the right kicker. Well, Charlie, if the ball goes wide, it's easier for the keeper. And it's close to the foot. It's really, really difficult. Gonzalo Payat. And yet another goal, his sixth of the tournament. Making this to 247 goals. But Charlie, it's again a goal when the team is one player down. It's always happening in this tournament when the player is down that they've scored. Oh, they're back to 11 now, Belgium, but damage is done. And the reach by Ruz, not quite there, and Kina will bring it away. Kina. Are they going to do it again here? Germany. Oh, Below the knee from Bellen. Bellen to the back of the circle. Okay. Denied by Ludwig. Brewer. Bellen. Well, you said, Cedric, a little earlier on that Germany didn't look panicked when they were two down and that they were looking ways to improve to get back into that and they've, they've done that haven't they well I think there's a lot of pressure on that ball that's how they're coming back but this like if you look at it he moves in and he slings it past the keeper he opens the face and then just closes the face in a very short drag past the keepers close to the right foot I think you enjoyed it well, definitely. <laughs> I think they have a great belief in themselves as, a, as individual as well as a team. And it's happened because of the three games that they've uh, come back from the death. So from this aspect, I think, you know, this team has shown the kind of drive that they have to go forward and a spirit which is never to die. So Belgium, Udoke, that's poor. And the Belgium just got off the boil here. And it's uh, Van der Heuvel will be pretty happy if he can get his side into that bench at two all and just have a chat with them. Germany looking for their third World Cup title. Also, of course, their second. Final 70 seconds, away third quarter. Belgium racing into a 2 0 lead inside 11 minutes of this contest. Only getting one back just before the half time break. Then, four and a bit minutes remaining in the third quarter. When you Marco Belgian side to Olympic finals Rio and Tokyo they lost Rio won Tokyo it's their second World Cup final having won here in 2018 looking to go back to back coming the fourth side do that Pakistan Australia and Germany From Miller, but it falls to Rua. Rua finds Milk Cow and the string of the stick with time running out. And it is all level here at the final short break because Germany found the equaliser from a penalty corner. Gonzalo Payat scoring yet again his sixth 
from the top of the circle in this contest and he means or his goal means that we are tied up with 15 to go three quarter time score here at the Kalinga Stadium Germany 2 Belgium 2 अहमियत इस बात की नहीं कि आप किन बुलंदियों पर हैं, बल्कि इस बात की है कि यहाँ पहुँचने का हौसला किससे मिला? देश की मिट्टी से, कजारिया, देश की मिट्टी से बनी टाइल से देश को बनाते हैं। Wakanda will fall. I think we're vulnerable. They're welcome to find out. सर गोविंदा सर वो सर थोड़ा मिस्टेक हो गया था वहाँ पे तो वो मिस्टेक के साथ जीओ ए मंजू चिल्ला मत इसमें ना हिम्मत नहीं है मेरे को गोली मारने की शादी 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 एक शादी ने तो जान ले जान नहीं लेगी So, match statistics at uh, three quarter time. And, well, Germany starting to come back into it. Look at those possession stats now. They're almost almost parity there. And though the uh, shots at goal, now Germany up from three shots at half time. Belgium get the final quarter of the Hockey Men's World Cup 2023 underway. It's Germany 2, Belgium 2, two sides that know each other so well. Their fourth meeting in three months. One win, one draw. One win apiece, one draw. Five goal scores, five conceded. Good work from Doc yeah, up against Finn Fenner, who will be breathing a sigh of release. He needs to get rid of this ball, and he does so. Lucas Vimfeder under all sorts of pressure. Picard wins it back. Van Doren, John John Doman, Kina. Belgium, the second oldest squad in this competition. You just wonder, Cedric, whether or not the intensity of this game might start to play a part in it. Well, I think the question is the experience. Can they hold the lines and cover the inside zones as much as possible? And, in a, and close out the angles so the Germans don't get free shots at goal. But they have showed their intention in the first couple of seconds. They want to put pressure on the defence. And you had Lukas Ventura there already coming in sixes and sevens. Perhaps a little passive in that third quarter for you, Belgium? Yes, and maybe that was uh, one of the things that the uh, Michel must have told them. Push up, get into attack a little bit more. But keep your back door closed because the Germans are very quick on the counter-attacks. Better weighs up his options, goes to Payat. Uh, incredible, isn't it? 43 and three quarter matches, and it comes down to this 15 minutes to try and separate Germany and Belgium. Or do we go to a shootout for a second consecutive hockey men's World Cup final? Well, the defending champions wanted to, you know, win again. As well as the Germans having a chance. Here's a chance at the top of the match. Grambush and he scores! And the reverse stick match. Grambush puts it between the legs of Vincent van Asch. And Germany, would you believe it? From two down, they're in front 3 2. Surely they can't do this again. Match Grambush with a rocket of a reverse stick. And Vincent van Asch, who's been so good all night, just can't get the heels together. Well, again, I think it's a deflection. It goes there. There's a deflection, a touch by Gunnar. It goes on. It slows the ball down. It gives time for Grambush, who's running forward. Deflects off. It slows down. Boom. Into the far corner. It actually goes through the gate. Mats Grambush, with his fifth goal of the tournament, has put Germany in front for the first time in this final, Germany 3, Belgium 2, and the question is, Germany who've been so used to coming from behind in the final minute 
of the game now have a lead with 12 and a half to go. But can they hold on to that lead? That's the key figure, key issue. Uh, they've always been coming back from the death. Now they've got to hold on and see whether they can do it. Well, it was a blistering start for the defending champions, Belgium, with those two goals in 45, 46 seconds in the first quarter. But Germany, this inner belief they have has served them well again. De Nea, yeah, oh, sorry, De Kerpel never really stopped that. What a captain he has been, hasn't he? Scored the first goal against England, put them on the comeback trail now, gets the goal that puts him in front in the final. Well, the half chances, the Germans are masters in converting the half chances. Um, they don't wait, they know the angles very well in the circle. The ball just going towards the baseline and he smashes it right into the goal. You know it could have gone out, but it's so close to the baseline, he fires it on target. Well, every quarter has had something for the fans, the players. The roller coaster of a final. And Doran deflects it away by Gav Breton. Well, Prince actually pulls that ball beautifully. It goes off a defender and smashed right through the goal, it through the pads. But basically, it was that deflection which again kills the defense and slows the ball down for Grambush to smash it across. Pino goes up and over the top, into traffic. Rambush, <laughs> looking for Trompertz. The uh, he lifted that, didn't he, into, yeah. Here is Ruiz. Tim Feather. Ludwig. Molders coached the Netherlands women to World Cup glory last summer and now he's in the backroom staff of the Germany men. What a, what a seven, eight months this might be if they hold on. Well, a personal friend too and, and a brilliant, brilliant coach, fantastic person and uh, always looking for ideas, new ideas, new innovations. Fabulous. If he can win this medal, it'll be a big feather in his cap. Fascinating hearing him talk, especially with the Dutch women. He was said, "I'm just here to guide them. I'm not here. You know, they take their own coach for training sessions, and I bring all the ideas in and then try and disseminate it out. It's a fascinating way. It's fascinating to listen to it." French twisting, turning, and, uh, and the three hit one. I lost. Well, Belgium really haven't created much in this second half, Cedric, to this point. Not much at all in terms of what they did in the first quarter. They really outplayed them completely. Uh, 
they got to be more creative as you say so correctly because they have the experience as well as Alan dropping it out as well as uh, basically having been Olympic champions and World Cup champions they know the pressures they know when to uh, step on the gas Brown Bush off the right foot good sack around the corner from Bocard and it's brought out by Gunard here is Wenye to uh, Gunard he loses out Sajid this could be an another game where the the side that scores first as we see this tackle coming in from uh, Brocard. Great tackle that, isn't it? That's well timed coming through the legs. Well, fabulous tackle. And look at the first touch. The first touch is, you know, a little more softer hands that he angers the ball to go forward. It's flat, so Brocard has all the opportunity to put the ball, stick through the legs and pull it away. Another game, so I was going to say, where the team that scores first ends up losing. How many times have we done this? Charlie, are we going to have a shootout? <laughs> That's another one. Face down this right hand side for Germany if they can work it. Yep, every knockout game I've done, the team that scored first has lost. The Dutch, 1 0 and 2 1 up against Belgium, lost in a shootout. Gary Brinkman, Rick Crone in the front, the ball behind them, just won the bronze medal. Well, you also said there's a lot of space on the right-hand side out here. The question is when the ball is on the left, there's so much of pressure on the ball. Everybody goes to the ball side, the health side is completely open. So if a direct transfer is done, there's so much of space. But the running lines and the defensive duties of the strikers of both teams do not allow that. There is a tackle from Van Ost. He's in. That bottom corner, and that's not a high percentage ball, but it gets away with it. Now Belgium have that free hit. They're at the wrong end of the field. They need to try and make Stadler work. Which they haven't really since they were 2-0 up, have they? Well he's oh. made just one save with the with the Pentaconal with the slip with a slip ball. Apart from that, he hasn't had touched the ball in the in the third quarter, no, in the fourth quarter. Make a good reading for Belgian fans. A chance here, perhaps. John John Jones, that shape, then finds Gunard down that right hand side into Jones, picked up on the reverse stick by Grambush. And Max Grambush brings it away. Wide line ball for Germany. Pressure on them to manage a game. Well, we, we said it was 12 minutes to go, now it's eight minutes, four minutes to go, so they've kept it for eight minutes. Here is the Slova. Well, came from behind twice against the Netherlands, and they come from behind against Germany in the final. Well, the Belgian team is actually by holding possession. If you look up front, they're stretching the defence by staying wide and deep in the pockets. And Doran finds Wenye. Wenye. Gunard back to Van Doren. Here is Kina. Kina to Gunard. Gunard slides it in. Good work from Granbush. And there is Payat. The Germany have lost their referral inside the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Belgium desperate for the equaliser. Little slip from Muller into Wenye. Top of the circle. And Henriks gets it clear. Well, Hendricks is low as, as low as he is, as short as he is. He is so quick on that loose ball. Free hit to Belgium. Five metres from the top of the Germany circle. Kina will leave it. Goes back to Van Doren. Little flick up, picked up. Oh, the shot is a dangerous one from De Slova. It wasn't going on target. They're going to ask the question here. One player. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so Tom, uh, what's the question? Five meters there? Okay, sure. Fair enough. Koen. Yes, Jakob. Belgium is asking that the German player was not five meters there. Can you check it? I will have a look. One moment, please. Well, let's have a look here as Van Dorn throws this aerial. Well, he's going backwards and, and, and the Slova doesn't trap the ball. He, he knocks the ball towards Muller. I don't think that's a foul. I think it's over five meters. He's pulling back when, they, when he's receiving the ball, the Slova, then... And then he's trying to go back as well. It's after he's trapped the ball. Listen in. Jakub? Yeah, go ahead. I have a decision for you. It's a penalty corner and Belgium keep their effort. I, do, I, don't, I don't think that when he actually... I don't think their feet are five metres apart. I know he then knocks the ball towards him and he's trying to go back. But when he... That's a bomb. There you go. They have a penalty corner. It's their second of the contest. And there are 2.39 remaining in this final quarter. Germany players are having a word with Steve Rogers on the halfway line, but there's uh, nothing he can do about it. And at the top of the circle is Tom Bone. Light Light Park. And they go for a move off the top. It comes to Light Park. He's run down by Hendricks. And Scamping away is the Kerpel to uh, keep it in play and trying to keep the pace. They haven't got a ball here of Belgium. Now they do. Dunard. Well, Germany are blessed with possibly the quickest player in this tournament in Hinrichs running at number one. Leipart. Flick of the wrist goes to that far side. And Doran fires it in, it's gone all the way across. I don't think that's a goal. That's not a goal. It's off the foot and then turned in by Muller. It was uh, a Germany touch. The ball from Van Doran was outside the circle and the last touch, or the only touch inside the circle, was a Germany touch. But that's why. Well, if you look at Van Doren's flick, it's slightly over the plastic, it's slightly long, not along the ground. It's rising, bouncing, and that hits off Muller's stick and goes into the goal. The stick, not his foot. Well, Look. there's no referral for Germany, but that definitely looks like a stick and not a foot. So, 152 remaining. A second penalty corner in the dying moments of the fourth quarter. This time they go to Tom Bone, and Bone won't get another chance. Henrik saying it came off his stick. Well, the ball goes to the second castle. Tom Bone has his flick and it goes on to... Well, it's gone off his stick onto his hand. Was it hand or arm? They've got another chance here. 148 remaining now. Henrik goes to Tom Bone. Levels things up for the defending champions with 1.43 remaining. And are we destined for yet another shootout? Well, Bond flicks the ball on the left of Stadler between the postman and the goalkeeper's outstretched arm. Goes past the first wave's left hand side. No chance for Stadler. Well, on that occasion, they didn't have Henrik's running one. It was Oruz. Yes, Oruz has actually not taken the line at all. 
is held back, and that's what happened. No, it's on bone. Makes it Germany three, Belgium three in this extraordinary contest. Bone now with 146 goals to his name. Ayat to Vicka. Prince drops it out to Mats Granbush. Lovely skill from Mats Granbush, but then a sweeping stick wins Belgian possession once again. Keener inside the final minute here. Good low tackle from Zwicker, and it is a Germany ball. Well, there's an urgency in both teams now in terms of trying to get that ball into the far pocket now as quickly as possible because it is 40 seconds to go well, in a penalty corner. Frederick, Belgium won their first world title in a shootout. They won their first Olympic title in a shootout. Is it going to be another shootout for them? Well, I think so, and I think you've got to understand that Vincent Menage has got so much of experience in shootouts in terms of being a winning goalkeeper in both shootouts. Gwen Ye. Well, have it's I up by the net, he's missed it, and that will be that. And Tom Bow has rescued the draw for Belgium, both sides. No, they're going to a shootout. What a final here at the Kalinga Stadium in Bhubaneswar. It has gone to the final minute and Tom Bone has scored a penalty corner. That means it finishes here all square and we need a penalty shootout. What an ending to an enthralling final. And Belgium and Germany will need eight seconds from the 23 meter line to decide who will be the world champions. Gonzalo Payat had given Germany the lead for the first time with only 12 minutes remaining. But Germany couldn't hold on. Belgium find the answer. It finishes here in Bhubaneswar. Germany three, Belgium three. The digital coverage of the FIH Odisha Hockey Men's World Cup is brought to you by Kajaria Tiles and Mutual Fund Sahi Hai. Sir, you were tired of me. 40! 39! I was thinking that Kash is also a retired lab. आप जैसी हो उसके लिए मैदान में उतरना पड़ेगा उतरूंगा ना सर अरे भाई यहाँ नहीं म्यूचुअल फंड्स के मैदान में म्यूचुअल फंड्स हर महीने इन्वेस्ट करो फ्यूचर की तैयारी करो करोड़ों लोग इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं और देश के साथ आगे बढ़ रहे हैं सही है सर तो आ जाओ मैदान में म्यूचुअल फंड निवेश बाजार जोखिमों के अधीन है योजना ऐसी जुड़े सभी दस्तावेजों को ध्यान ऐसी पढ़े One day, Sachin ne impossible ko possible kar dikhaya. This is an incredible moment. Not even sure whether we'll ever see a moment like this in the game again. One day ne Virat ko chasing ka king banaya. Fastest one day international century. One day mein Rohit ne ki records ki pocha. He's planning to score three double centuries in ODI cricket. One day mein kuch bhi mumkin hai. We made a mockery of a target of 360. What next are we going to see in World Cricket? Shuru ho chuka hai. Team India ke ODI World Cup ka safar. Ab se World Cup tak. Believe in blue. Mujhe itna janna hai ki Wakanda humara dost hai ya dushman. Jawab chahiye to aa jao. All smiles. He has been in three shootouts and has won all three. So who is going to step up and uh, have a go here? The new captains lost the coin. Well, 
Van Obel, I would be surprised if well, he's come across already. Van Obel has an excellent record. Lova, Wenye, and Cassines all took shootouts in the win over the Netherlands. Nina is also there. And here comes Wenye. So it's going to be the same five. For Germany, we've got Felon, Prince, Ruhr, Willis from walking away. We've got Prince, Felon, Milk Cow, and uh, Hannes Muller, and Mats Grambush will be the other one. So Felon has the best record of all the Germany players. Well, Cedric, this is uh, fascinating stuff. Where's your money? Oh, it's going to be a difficult one because, uh, you know, the, the Germans said they have routines, they have practices, they know it. It's like routine for them, and you know, with all the training they've done, but they've got Vincent Van Asch to go against. Ah, it's a difficult one to call. So, Van Noble, as he usually does, goes first. Over the last number of years, he's been in 16 shootouts. He's scored 10, he's missed six. Has the second best percentage accuracy of those that have stood up to be counted here. It's going to be Belgium who get this shootout underway. Florian van Obel up against Damberg. A change in the Germany goal and Damberg is down and out because van Obel turns it inside out and upside down. Another goal for Florian van Obel. When he fakes to hit that ball, he moves Danberg to one side. Again to the other side, Danberg actually falls and there's no chance. Goalkeeper on the ground has no chance against the player like Van Erbel who has all the skill and the control. So, what's happened here? Something's happened. Did the clock not start? No. Oh, we're all okay to go. It is Nicholas Fellen next up against Vincent Van Asch. Velen into the circle, still going Velen at pace. Velen scores! Well, that continues his fantastic record. He's never missed in a shootout. He's now 10 from 10. Well, if you look at it, he's, he attacks, attacks the space so quickly. He's looking up at Vincent Manage. He moves one side, holds a little bit of the ball, and then quickly just slips it past, although Manage had moved forward with an extended stick. Well, next up, it is the Slova. He went fifth four years ago and missed. This time he goes second, as he has done in the last two wins for them in major competitions. And this time, he does not score. And it is Germany who have the early advantage. But the Slova actually moves in. He's actually trying to make the goalkeeper fall. He falls and actually just after he palms that ball, it's over eight seconds and no goal. Yeah, good save from Danberg. Got a glove on that one. So next up, Hannes Muller. In Germany, number 25. Muller into the circle. Goes the reverse stick, it's saved, it's underneath the feet and he's scored in the second time of asking. Well, shades of Ruhr against Dolly Payne in England where the keeper made the save but couldn't make the rebound. Hannes Muller converts the second attempt for Germany. Well, Vincent Manash is closing space 
not committing. Ball goes off his stick onto his pads, and then a lucky fall for Muller, who just smashes the ball in within the eight seconds. Well, that's only Hannes Muller's second ever shootout attempt, and he scores it. Huge from the German player. Board in the shootout win over the Netherlands, and he scores again here. Now, Victor Wenye of Belgium has to score really and feel they put it into the keeper there is Danberg again Danberg makes the save when he misses and it's huge advantage now to Germany well when he just couldn't get the ball from out from under his feet great right leg work from Danberg well, you know, Vinet had to put the ball through his legs and he moved his legs so quickly together. A tall man like that got his feet closed in completely, got that ball and a great save. Well, next up is Marco Milkow. Now, he's taken four attempts and he's missed three. This is a huge moment for Milkow. Here he goes, Milkow, to put Germany 3-1 up. If he can get it round... Milkow misses. He almost did everything right, just didn't get the right hand round it. And there's still life in this one for Belgium. A little bit too casual for me in terms of Milkow. Uh, doesn't commit the keeper to one side. Now he moves across, fakes that he's going to pass the ball. Now look at him. He has to put his body forward, just angles the stick and pushes it out. Well, Germany changing their order from the other night because Milkow didn't go. It was Prince who went third the other night against the Netherlands. Now, Tango Kassainz of uh, Belgium missed in the shootout win against the Netherlands. Kassainz scores this time. And we're level at two all. What Jose Zeri does here is he looks at the keeper, tries to move him and then moves to the right-hand side, again to the left, ball goes away, keeper Danbuck is on the ground, fallen and there's no chance, he smashes the ball into the goal. So, Tice Prince, next up the size, keeping Belgium in this one. Prince, conversion rate of 83%. Can he find another? Yes, he can. Vice Prince makes it 3 2 Germany. And we are into the sharp point of the shootout because Kina must score. Well, Prince does really well for a youngster. He just holds the ball, waits for. Bonas should commit and then legs the ball into the far corner. So, Antoine Kina has only ever taken one shootout effort before. It was in the Pro League against Spain in 2019. He missed on that occasion. This time, he has to score because if he doesn't, Germany are the world champions. Kina. Danberg comes to the penalty stroke spot. Keener spins, scores, puts it underneath Danberg's left kicker or pad. And the backboard is a blessed sound for Belgian supporters. Well, he spins across and it actually goes through Danberg's pads. Doesn't get his feet close together quick enough. Trying to close down the angle, feet are open ball goes through the gate. So here is Mats Grambusch of Germany whose last shootout attempt was against Belgium in the Pro League. He missed but Germany went on to win that day but this to give Germany the World Cup. Grambusch the skipper up against Leipzig. Grambusch spins outside he's gone very wide and he can't score. Van 
Nash makes the save. And we're three all after five attempts. And we're into sudden death. But, but Ramush is coming to the circle. He hasn't got his eyes up on, on, on Banash. Banash sees him, he loses control, the ball goes away, and there's no way he's going to get there because Banash has closed the angle and put his body so close to the ball. Whenever he spin past Banash, he's always stepping towards the ball. Not sure what uh, Max Ramush should say. Now they swap over. So Belgium went first first set of five now it's Germany's turn to go first but we don't necessarily get a set of five here we're into sudden death oh, Nicholas Vellen will look to try and put Germany in front remember 2018 we were level after the first five we only went one round in the second set Vellant into the circle again he comes. Vellant scores once again. Nicholas Vellant, 11 from 11 now in shootouts. Manash does well to try and close the space, comes forward, but look at Vellant. He just moves to one side, puts the ball across slightly and over the flat stick of, of Vincent Manash. Manash commits to the right hand side along the ground, the ball goes over into the net. So, it's Florent Van Obel who must score to keep Belgium in this one. Van Obel into the circle he comes. Oh, he's lost control of it. Van Obel's in trouble here. Scores! Just in time. Van Obel showing real composure. He was the man who scored four years ago to give Belgium the World Cup, now he scores to keep them in it. Well, he has a cool head on his shoulders. He loses control of that ball and he still has the dexterity to get that ball and put a pass over Danberg's stick. So, Vice Prince now steps forward. All bets are off. All stats mean nothing now because it's how you deal with that pressure. And the pressure is on Prince. Van Ash comes a long way. And Prince squeezes it under the left hand glove of Vincent Van Ash to put Germany 5 4 up. Well, he did the same thing in the first one. He goes around the keeper, spins across, and is so quick in the release that Van Ash has no chance. It goes under his, under his uh, arm. He gets half a glove on it, doesn't it? He does. He gets the back corner of it. But not enough to keep it out. Kassines has to score. Once again, the pressure is on Belgium. Nails bitten all around the Kalinga Stadium. Kassines will spin back onto the reverse stick. Danberg saves and Kassines can't and Germany are the world champions. Jean-Paul Danberg, the hero for Germany, who have come from two goals down for the third consecutive game. But this time, they've done it in the championship match and they are the World Cup winners for 2023. Fantastic to see Germany coming back from two goals down, getting into the lead, and then losing it in, you know, in terms of getting an equaliser and then against the goalkeeper of Manash's calibre, they got on Dannenberg who played the game of his life in the shootout, getting the last one, getting his body in line and palming that ball. Brilliant stuff. Well, Belgium had the joy last time round in a penalty shoot in a shootout, but this time it is their pain and it's Germany's joy and Germany become the fourth team in World Cup Finals history to come from two down to lift the title. They did it in 2006 when they were 3-1 down against Australia. Netherlands did it twice in 1973 and 1998. But it is, the Nether uh, it is sorry, Germany who are the World Cup winners for the third time.
What a story here at the Kalinga Stadium. So close, but it wasn't to be for Belgium this time around. Well, Cedric, where do you start trying to sum all that up? Well, I, I just put it down to one word or two words. Unflagging spirit of the Germans and the never do, do or die. This is the final save from Danberg, who now has four shootout wins out of four. An extraordinary finale to what has been an extraordinary tournament. Dan Berg, absolutely fantastic. What a great scene, great shots. On the other side of the table, of course, we have the disappointment for Belgium. Oh, Maxime Van Oost, disappointment for him, of course. He wasn't part of the squad four years ago. And also John John Doman. I mean, he was a huge part of that 2018 winning squad, but ended up not playing the final because he was ill. But uh, he's back in the final, but they couldn't take the victory. It finished three all after regulation time, and Germany won the shootout 5-4. And it is they who are the World Cup winners for 2023. Oh, Cedric, this remarkable run for Germany, not only coming from two goals down, but also the fact that they've got this amazing uh, penalty or this shootout record. That is the state of play. And Germany now joined the Netherlands, Australia on three titles, uh, one behind Pakistan. And, uh, well, just uh, those five have won this trophy incredible absolutely incredible well you know after the game got over when he, when he saved that last stroke it was the goalkeeper the first goalkeeper from from the germans is stadler who ran onto Dannenberg, lifted him on his shoulders and just hugged him that was the kind of camaraderie they have in this team the oneness even though they're competitors they really have a great team spirit and they revolve around each other and push towards each other Well, let's have a look at the highlights. Come on, come on, come on. Don't worry about it. Send us a kid now, Abada. How was that your day? I'm going to sit down and listen to the world. I'm not going to get a good time. How much time will it take? I have a good time. I have a good time. I get all the news from the first time. What did you do? Where are you going? Where are you going? मुझे इतना जानना है कि वकांडा हमारा दोस्त है या दुश्मन जवाब चाहिए तो आ जाओ One day, Sachin ne impossible ko possible kar dikhaya. This is an incredible moment. Not even sure whether we'll ever see a moment like this in the game again. One day ne Virat ko chasing ka king banaya. Fastest one day international century. One day me Rohit ne ki records ki pocha. He's planning to score three double centuries in ODI cricket. One day me kuch bhi mumkin hai. I made a mockery of a target of 360. What next are we going to see in World Cricket? Shuru ho chuka hai. Team India ke ODI World Cup ka safar. Ab se World Cup tak. Believe in blue. Aapka introduction dijiye. Main Sukhu. Aapka ID. Kya bolte usko? Ha, financially stable. Tum to waise hi bekar ho. Ja, chai bana ke lao. Bekar nahi hu. Presentation with Dan Strait. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the post-match presentation ceremony for the FIH Odisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023, Bhubaneshwar Rao Keller. FIH and Hockey India would like to take the opportunity to thank their partners, event presenting partner Odisha, host partner Odisha Mining Corporation, FIH Global Leadership Partner, Hero Motor Corp, FIH Global Partners, Adisha, India's best kept secret, JSW, Watch.Hockey, and JSP Foundation. Official partners, Rungta Sons Private Limited and Tata Steel. FIH Global Suppliers, Dream 11, Osaka and Politan. Official suppliers, Apollo, Limca Sports, and Watergen. Thank you all for your support. Please welcome our dignitary to present the award for the player of the match. Honourable Justice Sri Vanit Saran, former Justice of Supreme Court of India and current Ombudsman and Ethics for the BCCI. And with the Czech and Oli, Sri Regu G, IAS Director, Technical Education, Government of Odisha. And the award for the player of the match in the 2023 World Cup final goes to Germany's number nine, Niklas Vellen. <laughs> Niklas Vellen, 11 from 11 is your record from shootouts. You've scored seven goals in this World Cup. You score in the final. You become a dad in your time here. In some way, shape or form, sum up for me how you're feeling right now. Uh, well, I, I can't. Uh, it was the last three weeks have been the most uh, amazing of my, of my entire life that we win it today. Uh, it's insane, I'm, I'm speechless. Just a comment on the opposition. Belgium were brave. They went ahead. They then fought back when you did what's commonly becoming known as a Germany, fighting back from 2 nothing down. They're a valiant team. What were your thoughts on the team you faced? It's a world-class team. They made the final uh, f like f four big tournaments in a row with the Olympics and World Cup. It's insane. They have so much quality. We knew it will be a huge clash against them. And we need our best hockey. And again, we come, um, come up to be... Uh, two goals short, come back, lead, get the equaliser and then win it in shootouts. Uh, it's, uh, it's crazy, but uh, huge congrats also to that team. They again uh, played an insane tournament over the last six, seven years. They've been so, so dominant and yeah, it kind of rounds up a, a bit of a story for us to, to beat them in the final today. So yeah, great. There's almost behind us, and we're going to let you go and celebrate in a minute, but almost a sense of disbelief with where this team have got from the depths you've been in games. The character of your team is just sensational. Just talk us through some of your teammates and how this team have gone about it at this event. Yeah, I don't name any teammates personally now because, it's, as you said, it's a team performance. And if you come back from two goals down uh, three times in a row, it's not luck. It's, it's our quality, our mentality. And we showed that again today, a bit earlier than the last two games, but we showed it again. And the character um, of this team and the mentality, it's, it's insane. And yeah, we keep on going. Nicholas, I want to let you go and celebrate. So we'll leave it there. Everyone, give a big round of applause to our player of the match in the World Cup final, Nicholas Vellen. Wow, what a performance from Nicholas. What a performance from the German team to win the World Cup. But commiserations and well played also to the Red Lions, to Belgium. Exceptional once more. What a match. And we're now going to go back up to the commentary box. Yeah, thanks very much, Dan. And uh, well, I think Nicholas Bellin has uh, summed that up particularly well. It isn't luck. You don't do it by luck three times in a row. Yeah, you know, you, you have the belief within yourself. You fight to the bitter end and you know that even if you're down, your mental strength pulls you through. You fight all the way and they've shown it in three of the matches right through in the semi-final as well as in the final. Well, almost a little bit of disbelief down on that uh, stage that's being constructed. But uh, incredible performance, a real squad performance when you think about it. You've had uh, Stadler 
in goal during regulation time and Danberg has come up and come up trumps in the shootout. Well, in two shootouts he's come out trumps and you must look at it, the fact that here he comes in, okay, he's actually is beaten on uh, because he's stripped and fallen. Once a goalkeeper has fallen, there's absolutely no scope of saving that ball. And that was the, This is the first first efforts from both teams. And Oval scoring and then Bellin. I mean, remarkable, what a remarkable tournament he's had. Then the Slova, who missed four years ago, just again here, good save from Danberg. And Muller, this was only his second ever shootout attempt. Well, a lucky break because the ball comes off when Asher's stick onto his pad and falls in the line of Muller, who just smashes it in. And here, it's 2-1 uh, down after three taken. Germany are up against it, but Milkow, with a chance to really drive home the advantage, could only find the side netting. And then it was very much in the balance once more. Full finish on the reverse from the sides. Did it two all. Good finish that from Prince, wasn't it? Well, he actually, Manash got a hand to it, but the quickness and that release was what beat Manash. Well, Kina had to score here, otherwise Germany would have won at that point. And then it swung to Grambush, who, if he scored here, would have won the match for Germany. So he missed. And uh, we were all level at three all after five. Then Bellum once again, Germany now going first put them four through that. Van Obel did really well because he lost control but really stayed calm to level it up. Well I think because Dannenberg fell he had the open open opportunity to score. And then Prince off the glove of uh, Van Asch puts uh, Germany in front and Kassai's couldn't make it two from two and it was all over. Dannenberg celebrating Germany. Crowd. Hockey. World Cup. 2023 champions and another little shake of the head from Mats Grambush it's just been extraordinary to repeat it's the third match in a row that they've come from two down to win and it is the fourth time in World Cup finals history that a team has come from two goals down to win Okay, let's get down onto the park because we have all the presentations hosted by Michael Absalom. Thanks very much, Charlie. Namaste, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along to the awards ceremony of the FIH Adisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023. First of all, we would like to thank all of our sponsors, our event presenting partner, Adisha. Our host partner, Adisha Mining Corporation. FIH Global Leadership Partner, Hero Moto Corp. FIH Global Partners, Adisha, India's Best Kept Secret, JSW, Watch.Hockey, and JSP Foundation. Official partners, Rung to Sons Private Limited and Tata Steel. FIH Global Suppliers, Dream 11, Osaka, and Politan. Official suppliers, Apollo, Limca Sports, and Watergen. We would like to congratulate the Adisha government, Hockey India, and the incredible volunteers that have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to deliver this event and make it such a huge success. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you. Danyavad. Next, we would like to welcome all of our dignitaries to the presentation party. Please come and join us. And the ceremony will now start with the award to the competitor stars who now become legends. Exceptional players and teams that excelled here in Bhubaneswar, but also in Raukela. They were all nominated for the following awards. The Fair Play Award with a one lakh rupees prize money check will be presented by Sri Sekha J. Manaharan, Treasurer of Hockey India. And the Fair Play Award goes to Belgium, 
we invite their captain, Felix Denaire, to step forward to collect the check for one lakh rupees. Next, the award for maximum team goals with one lakh rupees prize money, which will be presented by Sri Bola Nat Singh, Secretary General of Hockey India. And the award for maximum team goals goes to the Netherlands, 32 goals. And we invite their captain, Thierry Brickman, to come on stage and collect his cheque for one lakh rupees. Thank you very much. Next, the award for the best team goal celebration with a one lakh rupees prize money, which will be presented by Sri Bupendra Singh Punia, IAS Managing Director of ITCO. And the award for the best team goal celebration goes to Team Korea! And we ask their captain, Nam Yong Lee, to come on stage and collect the cheque on behalf of his team. Thank you, gentlemen. Next, it's the Fans Choice Award with one lakh rupees check, which will be presented by Sri Arvanil Krishna, the Commissioner Come Secretary, Sports and Youth Services Department, Government of Odisha. And the winner is Christopher Ruhr from Germany. Next this evening, the award for the JSP Foundation Best Junior Player of the Tournament with a 3 lakh rupees prize money check which will be presented by Sri Bimlendra Jha, Managing Director of Jindal Steel and Power. And the award for the JSP Foundation Best Junior Player of the Tournament goes to Mustafa Kasim from South Africa. Yeah, Kasim, he's uh, always been there or thereabouts for South Africa. Great talent. In fact, a number of the front five in South Africa have got real understanding and pace, and he is one of them. Well, you know, he's got a lethal finish. He attacks the space brilliantly, and he's got a great combination with his brother, who is the captain of the team. Next up, it is the award for the hero top scorer of the tournament with a three lakh rupees prize money check that will be presented by Mr. Fumio Ogura, the FIH executive board member and also the president of the Asian Hockey Federation. 
and Claire Prido, FIH Executive Board Member and President of Oceania Hockey Federation. And the award for the hero top scorer of the tournament goes to, from Australia, Jeremy Hayward. Oh, Jeremy Hayward with nine penalty corners. He opened up with a hat trick against France, scored in every game for Australia. Well, he's got a little penalty corner flick. He gets it from the first castle or the second castle. He's always angular, powerful and always on target. Next up, the award for the JSW Best Goalkeeper of the Tournament. With a 3 lakh rupees prize money check, which will be presented by Shilanal Kumar Singh, President of JSW BPSL. And the award for the JSW Best Goalkeeper of the Tournament goes to Vincent Van Asch of Belgium. Well, Van Ash, a worthy winner. He and Oli Payne, the two standout keepers, but Van Ash obviously going all the way to the final, a deserved winner. Yes, because it was such a close call between both Oli Payne and uh, Vincent Van Ash. Uh, Van Ash has had more of the games in the, in the tournament and he has played some really good games, especially in the first quarters when there was a lot of pressure on him. Now, the award for the best defender of the tournament with a three lakh rupees prize money check, which will be presented by Sri Lazarus Bala, Olympian. And the award for the best defender of the tournament goes to, from Australia, number 32, Jeremy Hayward. Oh, <laughs> well, Hayward coming back up again. <laughs> and he, also, uh, he did have a good tournament. There were a number of players that could have uh, taken this prize, but I had no arguments again with Hayward. Well, I think he covers the zones very well. Covers, you know, as a, as a free man, he uh, blocks out all the loose balls that come in. And I think, you know, he's got an aerial flick. He's got everything. He's got a penalty corner. The award for the best midfielder of the tournament with a three lakh rupees prize money check, which will be presented by Sri Vishal Kumar Dev, Principal Secretary, Finance Department, Government of Odisha. And the award for the best midfielder of the tournament goes to Victor Vengue, number 26 from Belgium. Vengue, such a key player for the Red Lions in the midfield, desperately disappointed, of course. Not a winner this time around, but a quality player. Well, a lot of years left for him to, to, to contribute to the Belgian team. Uh, super in terms of his attacking the space, great vision and great leads to receive the second pass. And congratulations to Victor Wenier. And we finish with a double award this evening. The award for the best forward of the tournament with a three lakh rupees prize money check will be presented by Sri Suresh Chandra Mahapatra, IAS Chief Secretary, Government of Odisha. The next award will also be the award for the Odisha best player of the tournament, also a three lakh rupees prize money check presented by Sri Dilip Kumar Turki, President of Hockey India. Now, you may have guessed it has gone to the same player, this award, from Germany, their number nine, Nicholas Verden. Well, Cedric, I can say there is absolutely no one more deserving than both these prizes for best player and best forward. Well, he's been a game changer for, for Germany. The way he has attacked the spaces, forced penalty corners, got the goals at the right time. Well, he's been a complete player and he's actually single-handedly got this victory for Germany. Yeah, congratulations to Nicholas. What a fortnight for him, not only ripping it up on so the stay there hockey for fields, us, please, Nicholas. but also a father as well. And we will well. invite Dilip Kumar Turkey, President of Hockey India, to come up on stage as well and award the Adisha Best Player of the Tournament, which also goes to Nicholas Vellen.
Oh, his teammates uh, quite rightly applauding. He's got a lot of things to take back from here, isn't he, Velen? Well, I think the most important thing is to go back to his little baby now and spend time with his family and, you know, enjoy this feeling of a World Cup winner as well as being the best player and the best forward. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to the medal and trophy presentation. The bronze medals for the FIH Adisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023, Bhubaneswar and Rao Keller, will be presented by Sri Tushakanti Bahari, Honorable Minister of the State of Electronics and IT, Sports and Youth Services and Home, Government of Adisha, and Narayka Fluren, FIH Executive Board Member and President of the European Hockey Federation. Taking third place in the competition, Hockey fans, please welcome back Team Netherlands! Well, and we invite the team forward. Weisser, Balk, De Hoos, Van Dam, Brinkman, Van Ass, Kroon, Peters, Varmaden, Wolterboer, Bains, Heidemakers, Bayern, Van Heinegen, Blak, Jensen, Reinga, Brinkman, Block, De Wilder, please step forward. Well, well deserved for the Netherlands. Eight times out of the last nine editions of the World Cup, they have medalled and uh, they add a third bronze to the bronze they won in 2002 when they beat Korea 2 1 after extra time and 2010 in New Delhi when they beat England 4-3. One of the powerhouses of hockey to go with their three titles, four silver medals. Only once when they've been to the final four have they not come away with a medal. That was in 1982. Well, if you know, if you just look at the way they've played, they're a young team. And if they've come into uh, won the, the bronze medal in this edition, I can just about imagine what's going to happen in the next couple of years because they've played so well. They've only conceded four goals in this tournament. Yeah, they played exceptionally well, didn't they? But it just wasn't to be for them. Average age of 25, so there's a lot of hockey left in them. Only 72 and a half caps per player. I think the elder statesmen in this team are just basically Sevi Vanas and uh, Perman Buck. The rest are really youngsters. Yeah, Blark 34, Van Ass 30, and everybody else is uh, under 30. So there's a lot of longevity in them. And uh, Pim and Blark just coming up onto the stage now. Love to have been the last team up, but not to be for him today. But he played well in that bronze medal game. As, uh, they came from behind. Well, I, you know, he's a class goalkeeper. He's, he's made a lot of saves for, for the Netherlands. And at many times in this tournament, you've seen he's come up drums quite a few times and saved them. That's why there's been only four goals against him. Well, it's it's another, another match where the team that scored first has lost. Australia scoring first and then going down 3-1. But I thought the Netherlands were very impressive in the second half. Didn't really give Australia too much of a chance to come back. Well, there were a couple of chances which came to the Netherlands. They are very clinical in the circle. Gary Brinkman. Pick up his ollie and walk away. Congratulations then to the Netherlands. Next, the silver medalists for the FIH Adisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023, Bhubaneswar and Rao Keller. This award and these medals will be presented by Sri Hemant Soren, Honourable Chief Minister, Jharkhand, and Saif Ahmed, the FIH Executive Board Member and President of the African Hockey Federation. Hockey fans, please welcome back your silver medalists, Belgium! And this is how the Belgium lineup looks like. Van Doren, Stockbrooks, Van Doren, Doman, Van Orbel, Dokier, 
Charlier, Bockord, De Kerpel, Hendricks, Denea, Vernash, Gunyard, De Sluva, Kina, Loipart, Wegne, Bone, Van Oost, and Cousins. Let's hear it for Team Belgium. Belgium unable to go back to back, which will be hugely disappointing for them. But when the dust settles, time just moves on a little bit. They can look back on these three weeks with huge pride. Well, definitely they were going to be probably the first team winner back to back in terms of the new era, in terms of getting a, 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 a win after 2018. I'm not certain about that. But I think the important thing is that they have shown that they can play even at this age. They have a, an experienced team which is a little older than the rest, but they have played really well. And you look at them in the first quarters, they had so much of time and so much of pressure on the German defence and were two goals up. Well, Belgium with an average age of 30. The Coming into tonight, 3,929 caps between them at an average of 218. How much did they miss Alexander Hendricks in that final? I don't know. We'll never know. Well, I think, you know, if you look at it, they just missed one penalty corner. They got one in. So I think uh, the question is, uh, would it make a difference? You never know. At four penalty corners in the final. That's Thibaut Stockbrooks, so if you didn't play, Felix Denier. Well, congratulations to Belgium. They leave with the silver medal. Now, the gold medals for the FIH Adisha Hockey Men's World Cup 2023 from Bhubaneswa and Rao Keller. These will be presented by Dato Tayab Ikram, the FIH President, IOC Commission Member, and IOC Athlete Steering Committee Member. And Professor Ganeshi Lal, Honourable Governor of Odisha. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back your world champions, Germany! Let's talk you through the team that won gold here. Stadler, Muller, Grambusch, Winfeder, Bellen, Prinz, Kaufmann, Hinrichs, Grambusch, Payat, Ruhr, Weigand, Bosserhoff, Miltkau, Zwicker, Muller, Oruz, Trumpets, Ludwig, and the star of the show in the shootout, Dunneberg. Well, Germany winning their third World Cup crown in six editions. They won in 2002 and 2006, and they were in the final in 2010, looking for a hat-trick, but went down to Australia 2-1. And this was their first return to the final four, and they finished it off with a gold medal. But more impressively, Cedric, coming back from two goals down in the quarter-final, the semi-final, and the final. Well, they're comeback kids, you want to call them the comeback kings of this tournament. Uh, in fact, even in the pool match against Belgium, they, they were 2-2, they were down 2, they came back to 2-2. The same thing in the quarterfinals against England, the same thing in the, in the semi-finals, and then in the final again. My God, this is incredible in terms of the resilience, the, kind of the belief in themselves, and the unflagging spirit that they have. Well, it's... Uh this is Vigan picking up his medal. Bosserhoff, he didn't uh, end up playing. Marco Milkow, who uh, ended up with one goal. Martin Zwicker, he's been around a very long time and now he has himself a gold medal. Well, he's a great midfielder. He's got great vision and speed on the ball. Uh, you know, it's great to see this this team with some of the experience as well as the youngsters coming good. Ludwig, and then Danenberg. What a what a performance he had! A cameo appearance in two shootouts, two shootout saves. Well, he used his height and his reach. He closed down the space as soon as the person, any other player spun. 
he, he closed on the angle by coming towards them and used his reach to track those balls, to save those balls. And now, and now the FIH Hockey Men's World Cup Trophy presentation will be presented by Dato Tayab Ikram, FIH President, IOC Commission Member, IOC Athlete Steering Committee Member, and also Professor Ganeshi Lal, Honourable Governor of Odisha, accompanied by Sri Hemant Soren, Honourable CM Jharkhand, and Sri Tushar Kanti Behara, Honourable Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Sports and Youth and Home Government of Odisha. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite the German captain, Mats Grattenbusch, to step forward and accept the trophy. And let's hear it for your 2023 FIH Adisha Men's World Cup winners, Germany! Well, fantastic scenes for Germany. Nicholas Vellen and Mats Grambusch celebrating and all the backroom staff now coming up. And a word about Andre Henning, a bronze medalist at the Olympic Games in 2016. And now he has a gold medal to savor. Well, fantastic because if you look at him, what he's done with his team, he's put the belief in them. He's allowed them to play their natural game and going attacking. Methodical play in terms of the normal, normal German position. And most important, the belief that you can win till the game is only over with the final whistle and win all the way. And, and then just a word for Yami Mulders there. It's two from the right. A World Cup winner with the Dutch women in the summer, now a World Cup winner with the German men in January. Extraordinary for, uh, for him. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, what an amazing event this has been. Thank you very much to all of the fans, all of the teams, on behalf of the Adisha government, Hockey India, and of course our winners, Team Germany. They're going to go off and celebrate here. Uh, on behalf of the Adisha government, Hockey India, and the International Hockey Federation, thank you all very much for your support. We wish you a safe journey home. And we will see you in four years' time. Thank you very much, Bhubaneshwa. Thank you, Rao Kella. Chakta India! Well, what a finale, Cedric, to what has been an amazing two and a half weeks of hockey. And it rounds off with Germany lifting their third World Cup title. Well, I think, you know, the viewing public would not be happier than getting a 3-3 draw and then going into a shootout. And of course, Germany winning it at the death in terms of winning that last shootout, but great save by Dannenberg. So from this aspect of a visual aspect is absolutely a brilliant World Cup. Well, that's the fourth time that a World Cup has been decided either on a shootout or penalty strokes. Netherlands beating India in 73, Pakistan beating the Netherlands in 94, and then of course, Belgium beating the Netherlands in 2018 and now Germany beating Belgium in 2023. It's going to be quite a night in the Germany camp. Well, definitely they're going to have a great party tonight. The Germans are known for having a big party after a, after a, after a win. Well, that belief that they've had over the last week. That's Grambush, what a moment for him as Germany are the World Cup champions. Fantastic moments for them. And they will regale stories in years to come of how they overcame two goal deficits in the quarter semi and then final. Well, it's, it's a fatal ending for a team which was 
actually out in many of the games and came back. Look at the semi-final too. You need to be a little bit careful with the, with the hockey stick on the top of that. It's looking a little wobbly. Yes, Tom Brambush is going to get his, uh, his fixing tools out to make sure that doesn't fall off. Well, the semi-final against Australia, when there were six seconds to go, they got that final goal and went 4-3. That was a critical aspect of this team, of not giving up to the final end. OK, that's it from Bhuvaneshwar Rao Keller 2023. Thanks for your company over the last two and a half weeks. I hope you've enjoyed the hockey from everybody here. Bye-bye. But the world champions for 2023 are Germany.